Good evening, councillors and members of the public. Before we commence the meeting, can I just draw your attention to the fire regulations that are on the screens behind? Um, there are no practice alarms planned for this evening, so if the alarm does go, please take it as a serious alarm. Leave the building as quickly as possible. The exits one, two, and three, and we assemble over the road under the canopy outside Waitrose. Can we all turn our mobiles to silent or to off, please? And members of the public, I'd just like to say that as a committee, we understand the matters under consideration tonight may be emotive. However, I would ask you to respect those around you in the public gallery and the committee and refrain from expressing your feelings by booing, cheering, or any other form of disturbance. This is a meeting held in public. It's not a public meeting. I uh, particularly ask the public speakers, please refrain from any form of intimidation. <coughs> uh, or threats, please do not criticize any officers. They don't have the ability to answer back, sadly, under the committee systems that we are there. I can protect them in a way by asking to stop speaking. As this meeting is webcast, would I like, I'd just like to introduce the officers sitting around the table um, in front of me. Lewis Jones, a legal man, Joe Dawes, planning officer, Tim Bryson, planning officer, Catherine Pearson, and then Elizabeth Sims, head of planning at Waverley. Moving on a little. We've got a very heavy workload coming up on joint planning in the next uh, few weeks. Um, in some cases, there will be two applications each evening. I apologize for that because both Councillor Coburn and I have looked at it very seriously and expressed our concern. But with the holiday period and the amount of work going on, we have to get through as quickly as possible. And really, two meetings in a week is not the way to uh, approach it. We also have to have a regard for the applicants who may not agree to an extension of the consultation period and would be inclined to go to appeal on grounds of non-determination, not a course we wish to contemplate. The officers will be making their presentation a little shorter to some degree, um, and that's that. May I also ask that we uh, leave our particular hobby horses behind. Um, I'd also ask members to try and put their thoughts into one presentation and not keep coming back uh, for further comments. Sometimes it's unavoidable. In no way do I suggest that I would curtail debate, but I sometimes hear the same comment repeated more than once. So with that, can we move on, please, to the meeting proper? Fiona, apologies for absence. Thank you, Chairman. I've had apologies from councillors Chris Storey, Nick Williams and Stuart Stennett, and there are no substitutes attending tonight. Thank you. Item two, declarations of interest, Fiona. None received prior to the meeting. Thank you. Questions from members of the public again, Fiona? None received, Chairman. Thank you very much. Application for planning permission is A1 WA 2017-0198, Oldfold Garden Centre, Horsham Road, Oldfold. Outlined planning application with all matters reserved except for access and layout for the erection of 27 dwellings, including nine affordable, with new access and associated works following demolition of the existing buildings, as amended by a plan received on the 19th of April 2017, and additional surface water and drainage information received on the 12th of April 2017, and a, a, additional ecological information received on the 25th of May 2017. And this is going to be introduced by Catherine, first of all, and then by Joe. Thank you, Chairman. 
Um, jo will take you through the application, the plans and photographs and recommendation, but I just wanted to provide members with um, an update that applies to all three applications under consideration this evening. The advice updates the relevant paragraphs on pages 12 of WA 2017-0198, page 9 of 2016-0114, and page 10 of 2017-014. Those paragraphs relate to the status of the draft local plan. As members will be aware, the examination of the draft local plan part 1 finished on the 6th of July. The inspector indicated that some modifications were needed to some parts of the plan. The modifications will be consulted on once finalised and all representations on the, on the modifications will be taken into account by the inspector before he issues his written report. In light of this, it's considered that substantial weight can now be given to the policies where no modifications are proposed and significant weight can be given to those policies where modifications are proposed. I'll now hand you over to Jo, who will take you through the application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, before I go on to the main presentation, can I just draw members' attention to a number of typing errors in the report? On page three, references made to the area committee. It should obviously be the joint area committee. And on page 17, the word objections has been omitted from the list of representations. So just to be clear, the representations listed are objections. Um, finally, on page 31, in the second paragraph, um, it should read that there's 23 units, would be three bedrooms or less, which equates to 85.18% of the total number of units. Turning to the presentation, this application is in outline, with the access and the layout to be considered at this stage, with all other matters reserved. The application seek permission to erect 27 dwellings on land occupied by a garden centre on the western side of the A281 to the east of the Allfold Crossways. So Allfold Crossways is up here. This is the 281 going towards Horsham. You've got the petrol station, the BP petrol station and the, and the, um, the store here. And this is the garden centre. And it's this red site <coughs> area outlined. This is the proposed layout. It's for 20, as I say, 27 units. Um, nine of them are to be affordable. The affordable ones are these ones here. And there's some in this block here. And then there's some in here. The site lies within the countryside beyond the Greenbelt, outside of any defined rural settlement area. The site, however, is considered to be a previously developed site. It's, it's previously developed land. It's currently operated as a garden centre, falling within the retail use class. The site is largely covered in hard standing, with a relatively small gravelled area to the rear of the site, and that's essentially in this part of the site down here. A commercial hand wash, um, car wash, is also run within the site. The site lies, as I say, within the countryside beyond the Greenbelt, where policy C2 is acknowledged to not be entirely consistent with the MPPF, given that policy T C2 refers to the protection for its own sake, whereas the MPPF places the emphasis on pretending protecting the intrinsic character and beauty of the countryside. Therefore, given that policy C2 is considered to be out of date, the tilted balance in favour of sustainable development, as set out in paragraph 14 of the MPPF, must apply. Of the proposed 27 units, as I've indicated, nine are to be affordable. That represents a 33% of the total, which weighs in favour of the application. When considering the proposed mix, and this is, uh, this is over the total amount, 18% are one-bed units, 33% are two-bed, 33% are three-bed, and 14% are four-bed plus. It's considered the proposal would provide an appropriate mix of dwellings to help meet the identified housing need, in line with the local plan policy, the 2015 Schmar, and paragraph 50 of the MPPF. The proposal includes on-site parking in accordance with the Council's parking guidelines, and also provides for an on-site leap and a lap and they're in this location here. No objections have been raised on highway safety grounds from the Highway Authority. The whole of the site lies within Flood Zone 1, and as such, residential development is an appropriate use. Whilst it's understood that concerns have been expressed regarding flooding implications, and, is and it is acknowledged that there have been historical incidents of hydraulic flooding, 
both Thames Water and the Local Lead Flood Authority have been consulted on the application. The Local Lead Flood Authority are confident that a SUD scheme can be satisfactorily implemented at the site to mitigate any surface water flooding concerns. And Thames Water have advised that they are currently exploring potential solutions to resolve flooding concerns in the vicinity. However, notwithstanding this work, they have advised that the flows would be so small in comparison to the existing flooding situation that any foul modelling which would be undertaken for the site would confirm that the impact of the development would be neg neg negligible. In view of the above, and given that these are matters of technical opinion, it is considered it would not be possible to refuse permission on flooding grounds in this instance. The applicants have also advised that there has been no reported issues of flooding on this site. The applicants have agreed to enter into an appropriate legal agreement to secure the provision of £169,468 worth of infrastructure contributions, together with the provision of a management company to provide and manage in perpetuity the local areas of play, open spaces and SUD scheme, as well as providing the nine affordable homes on site. Whilst it is appreciated that the provision of 27 new dwellings would have an impact visually, resulting in the suburbanisation of this site, this adverse impact would not outweigh the benefits of providing new housing, including 33% affordable, on this previously developed site. As I say, this application is um, for the layout and the access only. We have got some indicative elevations of what might um, be possible. This is for the, the flats um, in the sort of corner um, near, near the access to the site. These are photographs taken um, on the site. So this is the entrance from the 281 looking into and towards the site. You'll see there's a, a big grass verge. This side, the petrol station to get your bearings is, is here. And on all four crossroads is obviously that way. That's looking towards the petrol station. As you see, the, the access is here. And obviously you've got the petrol station down that way. And this is looking in the other direction towards all four crossways. This is looking a bit further into the site, looking towards the rear. You've got polytunnels and the, the main buildings are on this side. And you've got the car wash at the moment is on this side. But you'll see that the site is, is all concreted. It's all tarmac. That's, again, looking towards the buildings. So this is the access is now up this, this way, sort of, sort of looking across the site. Um, there's polytunnels. There are covered polytunnels. And there are some glass house buildings that have got the main um, shop part. Um, but there's a lot of external storage of... Um, you know, compost and, and plants and, and the like. This is an area of gravelled um, land to the back of the site. Following on from the member's site visit earlier, a concern was relays, raised in relation to the provision of power lines crossing the site. The I have gone back to the applicant and they've advised that should permission be granted for this scheme, a utilities service report will be commissioned as part of the disposal of the site to advise on any requirements in terms of capacity improvements and also the infrastructure that's existing. The applicant has indicated that, in principle, he would be happy for the power line to be buried within the site. However, this is a matter that can only be resolved once we know the outcome of the utilities service report. The application is recommended for approval, as set out on page 55 of the agenda. As indicated, it requires the completion of a section 106 agreement, and that's in the wording of the recommendation, to secure contributions towards education, environmental enhancements, place-based provision, recycling, highways and footway improvements, and the provision of 33% of affordable housing, and the proposed mix, the provision of on-site place space and the provision of a man management company to manage those place spaces and the SUDS implementation. And the application is recommended for approval, subject, condition, subject to conditions 1 to 24 and informatives 1 to 9 on pages 55 to 66. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Joe and uh, Catherine. We now move to uh, public speaking, and first of all, uh, I'd ask uh, Adrian Clark to come forward. And uh, you have four minutes left from when you start speaking. Thank you, um, start. May I just ask you a quick question first? Would that be okay? Certainly. Um, I noticed on page 11 of 52. Um, it says here, uh, under Allfold Parish Council, 
Um, parish Council requests that the planning authority satisfy the following matters and, if necessary, impose relevant conditions. And then it talks about... Hold, hold, hold on. Well, sorry. Page, I uh, page 11 of 52... Oh, it's the second application. I'm, I'm sorry, yes, it's the yeah. second one. I should have said that, yes. Okay, sorry. My fault. You have another four minutes when we Thank discuss you very that much. application I just, anyway. Just, it's but, pertinent uh, to what I want to say, you see, so. Fine. Uh, so, page 11 of 52. Uh, I just wondered if it's possible just to clarify if the... Um, uh, the foul sewage from this site is actually going to go to Loxwood or to Orfold because I saw a reference to Thames Water earlier as well and it doesn't actually make that clear. I will ask the officers to address that when you... It's get, kind, it, yes. Well, it's very pertinent before I say what I say, so if it's possible, that would be really kind. Um, I would just ask the officers, just hold on a minute. Sure. Chairman, if I may. Please. Um, page 14 of 66, so this is on the first application with, to be considered this evening. Thames Water um, have confirmed in their response on that application that the foul flows from the site will drain towards Loxwood Road. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I only mention it because someone from Thames Water said that the uh, F, the, the sewage was going to go to Cranley for treatment and it just seems to be at odds with that and I just wanted to check that. Again, Thames would come back with this uh, statement that it's going the other way. Okay, so. that's perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, ready when you are. Okay. Um, uh, Cranley Civic Society um, would like to object to this application um, for the following reason. Um, T Thames Water confirmed in March that all the asbestos drinking water pipes in our area, including Allfold, are white asbestos. The drinking water inspectorate say that there is no consistent proving risk to public health. White asbestos is a banned substance in the UK and it is the least dangerous out of the six different types of asbestos, the worst being blue asbestos, which is most often quoted as 500 times more dangerous. But the Health and Safety Executive is at odds with the Drinking Water Inspectorate on this. HSC's website states that pipes manufactured before 1969 were made with blue asbestos. We are very grateful to our MP, Anne Milton, for asking Thames Water to get independent tests done on random samples of pipe dug up in Cranley. This test was done 10 days ago, and it was confirmed to be blue asbestos. Um, blue asbestos drinking water pipes have a maximum design life of 70 years, and we're nearing that lifespan. As pipes age, the internal surface degrades and pipes start to rupture, releasing more free asbestos fibres into the drinking water supply. Unlike white asbestos, which with curly fibres is more like cotton wool, blue asbestos comprises sharp needle-like fibres which can pierce membranes in our gastrointestinal tract. New houses will have to be supplied with one bar pressure on this development. And the applicants' new houses will put strain on the already deteriorating asbestos cement pipes close by to the, asbestos, the applicant's site. Um, and they're shown on Thames Water's pipework map. Um, Anne Milton is organising a meeting in Cranley on the 24th of July to discuss asbestos cement pipes in this area of Surrey. She is inviting the Drinking Water Inspectorate, Thames Water, the Environment Agency, Waverley and Cranley, uh, sorry, Waverley um, Borough Council and Cranley Civic Society to attend. If you approve this application tonight, we will pre present this to the Health and Safety Executive as a reportable offence on the basis that we warned Waverley about this in a detailed risk assessment in January and again verbally tonight. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman. As this is a health and safety issue, if you would like to break with protocol and invite me to answer any questions, I'll be happy to do so. Thank you. No, sir. 
Thank you. Thank you. I'd ask uh, Adrian Erica. Thank you, so you Mr. Chairman. Four minutes. I think you yeah. know the system. Yeah, thank you. Uh, councillors, Orfold Parish Council objects to this application and considers that the proposed 27 unit dwellings constitutes overdevelopment of the site and will have an urbanising effect out of character in this rural area. It also represents a loss of employment in the village. The Parish Council considers a previous application for 10 houses that we viewed before its withdrawal subsequent revision and, I believe, reapplication this evening, a much more suitable number for this site. If the committee is minded to approve this application, then the Parish Council requests the following conditions. The Parish Council is concerned about any future additional development on this site not included in this application. It would therefore request that the remainder of the site is allocated as local green space for the benefit of the residents of the parish and is irre irrevocably deeded to the parish in perp perpetuity, along with a financial obligation for the application to pay for the upkeep and maintenance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. And finally, Joe Mill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity to address the committee. This application relates to Oldfold Garden Centre, a commercial retail site located close to the settlement boundary of Oldfold Crossways. The land is a previously developed brownfield site which has been operated as a garden centre for many years. However, it's no longer commercially viable and cannot continue in its current use indefinitely. No planning policy supports the retention of the existing outer centre retail use. The application site, together with the former horticultural land to its north, has been identified as a potentially deliverable housing site in the Council's land availability assessment. Other than Dunsfold Aerodrome, it's the only brownfield site identified within Oldfold. Policy SP2 of the new local plan seeks to maximise opportunities for the redevelopment of suitable brownfield sites for housing. Furthermore, Policy ALH1 identifies Oldfold as an appropriate location to deliver 100 units over the course of the plan. As such, the land's redevelopment for residential purposes is entirely consistent with the policies of the emerging local plan. Originally, an outline application for 10 units was submitted for this site, and this scheme appears next on the agenda. In response to officers' suggestions, this revised scheme for 27 units has been prepared which seeks to maximise the number of units achievable on the site and the corresponding provision of affordable housing. The application proposes a mix of house types reflecting local needs as set out in the Council's housing market assessment, albeit with a slight emphasis on two-bedroom affordable units as requested by the Council's housing enabling officer. A total of nine affordable units would be provided. In addition, the layout shows provision of a local area of play and a local equipped area of play. My client has also indicated a willingness to enter into a Section 106 agreement which would secure the affordable housing and contributions relating to further highway and environmental improvements, education provision and recycling bins as set out in the agenda. The NPPF indicates that housing applications should be considered within the context of a presumption in favour of sustainable development. The scheme proposes a sustainable form of development, making effective use of this brownfield site in an edge of settlement location. It offers relatively good access to essential facilities, including the convenience store located within the petrol filling station, um, the village hall, and the local bus stops. The application is accompanied by a transport statement, which confirms that there will be a net reduction of traffic generation to the site. Whilst a small increase will be experienced at peak times, this has been calculated as being insignificant when compared with observed traffic flows as a whole over the peak period and will not have any material impact upon highway safety. 
The application also makes a financial contribution to its highway safety improvements at Oldfall Crossways and Loxwood Road and improvements to public footpath 404 as required by the County Highways Authority. It also proposes upgrading the footpath connection to the south, linking the site to the convenience store at the petrol filling station and will provide incentive funding for bus tickets. The application proposes new market and affordable housing in a manner which would not be detrimental to the residential amenities of adjacent properties. It would replace the commercial scale buildings with ones of a more domestic scale, which would, due to the availability of existing boundary screening, not appear visually intrusive within the countryside. In the absence of any other material considerations, the tilted balance set out in the NPPF applies and weighs in favour of the current scheme, and members are requested to accept the recommendation of their officers and approve the application. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Members, uh, we had a very good site visit today. I thank you all for attending that. It's uh, very worthwhile. But first, I open it up to you. Councillor Dinas. Thank you, Chair. Um, tonight, obviously, there's three different applications, and a lot of the facts and figures and statements, unfortunately, apply to all three because of the proximity. But I'm sure you appreciate because they are three separate applications. Some of these points will have to be repeated. Um, I think it's already been said, and thank you to all the speakers, it's one of the main employment sites in Allfold. Um, I think there's 12 full-time equivalent people there, the car wash. Um, that is a huge loss to Allfold. Many of the people who work there um, walk to work. It is a lot of local people who work there, and that's going to be a real shame because they won't have jobs. Appreciate is uh, tonight is reserved matters, but I have to say the design is pretty poor. Just seems to be lines of properties, but I'll go no further than just say that tonight. Um, it's been mentioned this is countryside beyond the green belt. It is outside the rural settlement boundary, and it's also mentioned in the report it's on contaminated land. So that's an issue that's obviously got to be dealt with. I'd like to go through some of the consultation that's in the documents and hopefully members can keep up with me. Um, highways. Now it mentions vouchers for future occupants for the purchase of bikes or bus passes. I asked my colleagues here how many of them would want to get on a push bike and go down the 281 towards the Allfold Crossways. I certainly wouldn't. Especially it's as a location that's known for serious collisions and life-changing accidents. It also talks about bus passes. That's brilliant if you have a bus service that services the village. What I couldn't see, and I'm sure, my, um, I'm sure the planning department will tell me where this is covered in the 106. I had a look on page 7, and I'm sure I've read it, but as there's three applications, you start to get a little bit confused. I couldn't actually see it within the 106 agreement. I then talk about Orfold Parish Council and uh, I'm grateful for Councillor Erica for speaking. And the interesting point is, it doesn't object in principle to housing being on that site. And I think that's positive when we're saying there should be some housing on that site. But what it does object is 27 houses which urbanises the area. If you look at the road, the main 281, on the opposite side of the road, there are mostly single houses. I don't think there's any area where there's more than one house on that side of the road. And if you go on the side of the road where uh, the garden centre is, you have a small road of Hatch Close, which I think has four houses. It's very close to the main road. And every other house is on the main A281. So that is the style of the village. I'm astounded, actually, that... And, and I will come back to it later, the letter that Wyvel Garden Centre sent out, which I was very grateful, dated the 7th of July, that Waverley has encouraged further expansion to the original application. And I'll come back to the words used in those letters in a minute. Now, we talk about Thames Water, and we, we always talk about the issues of um, the sewage, we talk about flooding and everything else, and it seems all gramping conditions will be fine and everything will be sorted. It talks that Thames Water are working in collaboration to explore potential solutions with Waverley. 
Well, so far, those collaborations have decided that possibly six houses in Clappers Meadow may have their waste, or the water that runs off the property, so the water may go into the sewage by mistake when it was built in the 1950s. So potentially Waverley can get those six properties to have water butts to prevent the water going into the waste, which is contaminating it. That to date is the only positive solution that's come out. Other solutions are long-term, multi-million pound solutions of making the pipes bigger, improving pumping stations. And Thames of Water being quite clear, it's done on a risk basis and when you've got big towns that have issues, they're not going to spend multi-millions pounds. There is no solution in the near future. And that's all been discussed and all been shown in the Allfold Flood Forum. Now, we, like I say, we often talk about gramping conditions and how this is going to be our saviour. Just about 200 yards from that location, so it's, it's in between the two applications tonight, there was the old MOT centre. I think most people will know that, so it's right almost on the junction with the 281, where we put four houses recently, which had a Grampian condition. Two weeks ago, I had a site visit with Thames Water, where the sewage from those four houses are now pumping through some of the neighbours' properties. And I think that's shameful. So when I'm told Grampian conditions will work, I'm not that convinced. I had to see the lady who had sewage coming through her patio, and that's not the only address it's happening. Slightly down the road, within 50 to 100 yards of Loxwood Road, so this is all within the immediate area, a number of premises have got um, non-returnable release valves. That is because when it rains, the water goes into the pipe system, and therefore the sewage comes back into people's houses. Now, if you put a non-returnable valve, and I do know all about these, what it does, it stops it going into your house, but it pumps into someone else's. There is no solution. So we've got three or four non-returnable valves within 100 yards of the junction. Again, is that really what we aspire to? So it's not just about hydraulic flooding. We have had huge flooding in the area. I've lived in Allfold 25 years. I know how many times the road, the fields, and people's houses are flooded. It wasn't just 2013-14. It happened a few years before, and the whole road was underwater. It is because often the old pipes that the rainwater seeps into, then it pumps it back into people's houses. Okay, I won't go into too much detail about the 281. But do not underestimate what type of road that is, how many serious accidents have been on that road, how many accidents that have changed people's lives, and never forgetting just down the road there was recently a fatal accident. We talk about sustainable development, and you'll be pleased to know I won't read out uh, what achieving sustainable development says in the National Planning Policy Framework, but if need do I will come back to it talks about construction jobs within, our, um, within the officer's report. Um, yes, it will do, but it will also lose jobs at the same time, which is long term. Those people, that, that, the garden centre has been in post, I think, at least since 1978. Social, it talks about affordable housing to meet an identified need. I haven't heard about the Allfold Housing Needs Assessment Survey that was conducted a few years ago. Now, this was accepted by Waverley as a relevant document. It stated there was a need for two affordable houses in the area. And since that date, one person has moved away. So I have to ask myself, where is the need locally? We have Sweetest Cops online. We have Dunsfold Park, which will provide hundreds of affordable homes. There's also all the houses in Cranley, why is the Allfold Housing Needs Assessment not referenced in this document? And if it is, my apologies, but I couldn't see it. Talk about the environmental role in sustainable development. And that's about protecting and enhancing our natural built historic environment. 
Okay, I can't really see too much of that personally. It says states in the report easy access to existing facilities and transport links. I'm not sure which transport links we're actually talking about. If you walk towards the Dunsfold Road, yes, there's a bus stop on one side. On the opposite side, there's a, hand, there's a man-made bus stop and you have to stand on the pavement. What other transport links other than vehicle? Throughout the report, it states village considered to have very limited level of facilities. I mean, to be fair, throughout these reports, it says it's got more facilities and it has. It talks about facilities that have closed. It talks about facilities like the MOT centre that have been gone donkey's years and now have got houses. Now, we, we talk about the, the local plan. And Allfold was given 100 houses. And that was a considerably high amount for a, a village that is classed as small with limited facilities. Let's remember, this plan lasts till 2032. And in the last couple of years, we've got 82 houses allocated already with 15 years still to go. Over that period to 2032, you have the ability to develop the village to make it sustainable. Right, if we turn to page 31, please. About two-thirds of the way down, it says density of 22.68 dwellings per hectare. I acknowledge this would alter the appearance of the area, introducing the suburban forum, form of development, it will affect the character of the area. MPPF states, planning authorities should identify where affordable housing is needed. As I've said, where is that need locally? State, it is borough-wide. Now, by definition, affordable often means families on low income, it could mean single parents. So we put them in an isolated location with very, very limited services, other than a petrol station and a, and a small shop, poor bus services, four miles to the doctors, schools. They have no transport. They are isolated. Right, if we can turn to page 34, please. The last paragraph. The proposal would represent a significant suburbanisation of the site. The existing structures are a form commonly found in garden centres located in rural locations. So say in the current location where the garden centre is, is what you would expect. And it's considered to be a form and character reflects its countryside location. The proposed development would represent a more intensive, higher form of development spread across the wider side, which would be suburban in character. And I think the officers have accepted, therefore, that the proposal would have an adverse impact on the character and visual amenities of this part of the countryside and would have to be weighed against in planning balance against other consideration. I haven't heard too many positive considerations so far. Now, page 35 also talks about policy ST1 at the bottom. Development scheme should be located where it is accessible by forms of travel other than private car. Well, there's no bus stop until you go all the way back to, as far as I'm aware, the Dunsfold Road um, at some considerable distance. We haven't seen any improvement in the bus service, so I don't hold a lot of faith with that. So where are the schemes to encourage non-use of vehicles then? Other than the voucher to buy a bike, as I said, who would want to ride on the uh, 281? And 100 pounds for bus vouchers, well, if you've ever got the bus from, Gil um, from Allfold to somewhere like Guildford, it goes through virtually every village. It's not a direct route, it goes for every village. In rush hour, that can take anything up to an hour and a half. It is a most awful, it's, a, it's almost like a mystery tour. But the, 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 you know, the bus service is poor. It's, we, we can't dress it up. 
Now, I have got quite a few more bits, but Chair, if you want someone else to... Um, I'll speak into the Chair. Would you rather me carry on or come back at a later stage? But there is some other points from the report I'd like to raise. Raise them now, please. OK, so, as I said, there is the Allfold Flood Forum, and that has clearly identified Allfold has flooded numerous times. The A281 on that bend floods constantly, virtually every time it rains. Policy D13 development will only be permitted where adequate infrastructure and facilities are available. I would argue that the 106 agreement doesn't contribute to offset this. Policy ICS1 of the draft local plan Council resists the loss to key services and facilities unless an appropriate alternative is provided or evidence is provided that the facility is no longer required. I would say the Gardener Centre is a facility for the community that is still required. We haven't considered, and I'm sure my colleagues will do, the cumulative effect of Dunsfold, Sweeters Cops and Cranley. All applications must be mutually compatible and remain within the environmental capacity of the area and its environs. 27 houses for a village of 350 is significant. Now, maths was never my strong subject, but I think it's about 8% in one application alone. Now, the MPFF requires the benefits of the scheme must be balanced against the negative aspects of the scheme. I'll leave that to my colleagues to see whether they feel that has been done. But it is minimal and there's lots of negatives. Now the LAA, which has been mentioned already, so the land availability assessment, which we've accepted as a council, has identified this location as having 10 houses. So our own LAA states 10 houses. Now if I can turn into the letter sent by Wyville Garden Centres, and I presume it's been sent to everybody, well, I'll just go to the, the background section and just read a bit out of that. And this is from my veil themselves. We submitted a planning application for 10 new homes on the site in December 2016. Following submission of the application, your planning officers encouraged us to consider an alternative proposal to make the most efficient use possible of this brownfield site. As a result of this, we submitted a new outline application for 27 homes to be considered in tandem with the 10 home submission. Whilst the 27 homes makes more efficient use of the site, both the 10 home and the 27 schemes are appropriate developments, either which would play a valuable role in meeting all foals housing needs. So Wyvale are saying they were happy with the 10 homes as an application, but it was through Waverley's insistence that they've put a second application in. Now, a lot of what I've said, 10 homes is a far better application for a village with those facilities and the infrastructure. And I think it's a shame that a bigger application, is, they've tried to shoehorn a bigger application in. Now, I will clearly be voting against this, and I will also, um, when it comes to the second application, ask for a deferment so that application can be reconsidered properly. I'll leave it at this stage because I can see I'm getting strange looks from the front um, and faces being pulled, so I'll leave it at this stage. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Sorry if my face isn't suit. <laughs> I'm just going to make uh, a point. You talked about flooding on the road. I would suggest that uh, gullies not being cleared and that's Surrey County Council's uh, responsibility, and uh, I'll refer to it probably later, but the spatial strategy that we all heard about last, uh, last two weeks at the examination of our local plan didn't come up with any great answers for something like 11,000 new homes in Waverley. So, uh, Councillor Coburn. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in the absence of anybody else, I just wanted to say that I 
probably was the only councillor that sat through the entire local plan hearing. I'm, I'm not sure, do correct me if I were wrong. Um, and it was, it was interesting listening to the inspector because one of the questions he asked, and I actually wrote down the whole question, uh, and as we all know, the balance is between harm and benefit. That's the balance that we have to look at on every side. And he actually just asked the question, what is the harm to a village in terms of developing it so that it actually ends up with more facilities and therefore becomes sustainable? And it was just a question he threw out really over the six days of, uh, when it came to this uh, discussion on sustainability. So I just thought I would raise that. We have, as the chairman's just said, uh, a higher target. We have to build houses and we have to understand the harm and the benefit each time we look at a site. We've just had a very, very long speech, a lot of which was not on planning matters. It was on issues related, but not strictly planning matters. And we do, as a joint planning committee, have to look at each site and weigh up that crucial balance. And if we don't do that, then we're slacking in our duty as a joint planning committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just also, a person who lives in a village, I would love something like 25 uh, per hectare as a, a number. Our last uh, application in Hindhead was 54 to the hectare. Councillor Jane. Councillor Jane. Thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, uh, apropos of what Councillor Coburn has just said, um, this application um, doesn't give any extra facilities for um, the village of Oldfold at all. In fact, it removes one employment site. So, in what the inspector said, my conclusion of that is it doesn't offer anything, but it does offer two affordable houses, which is probably appropriate for Orfold. Nine, um, and under the circumstances, if it does flood, it's probably easier to move two, if, if the council are responsible or the housing association, two families to temporary accommodation rather than nine. So, I, I would suggest that. 27 houses is more out of keeping with the area um, um, and the loss of the amenities, as the inspector would say, probably outweighs uh, the benefit of 27 houses. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Barn. Well, for a long time we've understood in a variety of different ways, the problems that we have with sewage in Allfold itself, but of course in Cranley as well. From what I've heard, Allfold probably is in a worse situation, or has been in a worse situation than, than Cranley, um, in terms of the problems of sewage back, backfilling or whatever and going in, as, as, as Council Dean has explained. Uh, the uh, history, to, sorry, the, the Cranley Civic Society asked the question about which way is the, is the sewage going. An answer was given, and I read the, what is there. I, I'm not sure that we are clear what we know about where that sewage is going, whether it's going away from Cranley and creating more problems for Cranley. But what is important is that we need to not increase the problems that we already have in Allfold. It's a severe problem, and I think it ought to be addressed. We seem not to be able to get... Thames Water to come to us, unless I'm mistaken, to talk to us about what happens, what they can do, what money they're prepared to put into the system, or indeed what money is required from any planning application to create a system that is workable and acceptable um, in today, well, in any society. Who wants sewage being pumped back into people's houses? So, on that basis, I'm very, very doubtful about my support for this application as it stands, we need to know more from Thames Water. There are lots of other reasons that have been put forward why it may not be suitable. I'm not covering that point at all. I'm covering points about sewage. Right, can I just come back to our discussion here? The application is an outline application with all matters reserved except for access and layout for the erection of the 27 dwellings. Councillor Gray. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just looking at the the benefits to to Oldfold taking the lead from uh, Councillor Coburn, 
Um, I'm minded to refer the members to page 33 about the fourth paragraph, third, fourth paragraph down, which says that the affordable houses um, really were only acceptable providing that it's a borough-wide connection scheme rather than a local. So that really is not providing any local facility. It's providing a wider uh, Waverley um, thing. It's a shame that we didn't put a cascade in there. If there wasn't any demand locally, then that would then go to the wider borough. Um, just going back to Councillor Dennis's comments, and again on the benefits to, to Oldfold, it was made crystal clear there from the report back from Thames Water that there is no money to solve the sewage problem in Oldfold. I don't see that Oldfold is getting anything out of this development. I don't see that the, the disadvantages are outweighed, and I can't see it from the report or from the, the items in there. Um, unless I hear anything to the contrary from my colleagues, I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Can I just ask the officers if they want to uh, come in at this point, or should we continue with the debate? Thank you, Chairman. Elizabeth Sims. There are, there are a few points I think it might be worth just addressing at, at this point, um, and in no particular order, but I think to start with, um, it, it is quite important to bear in mind the reason that there's been dialogue about the best use of this site is because there is clearly general concern throughout the borough about greenfield encroachment. We're a rural borough, there is an expectation on us to accommodate housing need and we need to do that in the most sustainable, efficient way, bearing in mind that there are a limited number of sites coming forward. So whilst on the face of it, it might be desirable to say fewer dwellings is better, clearly it goes without saying that if you don't make best use sites, particularly brownfield sites, it will create pressure somewhere else for further greenfield release. And that is a very important sustain sustainability framework to bear in mind your, your consideration of this site. So I say that at the outset. The, 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 the other point is that, as Catherine said right at the beginning of the meeting, with the progress that was made on the local plan last week, we haven't adopted the plan. We can't give full weight to its policies. But for where policies haven't been contested by the inspector or indeed required to be modified, you can now and you should, as planning authority, give substantial weight to those policies, including, of course, the spatial strategy. And the inspector has basically agreed your plan, which identifies providing housing growth in the four main settlements and then modest growth in certain villages, including all folds. So the principle of releasing sites uh, in, in an acceptable planning way in, in the village is acceptable in principle. Um, and that is, at the moment, up to a minimum of 100 dwellings in all fold. But of course, as you're aware, the inspectors indicated that the plan will need to increase somewhat. And therefore, overall, going forward to adoption the, 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 across the villages, it may well be higher than that. But at the moment, it is sustainable, it's an acceptable strategy. So accommodating these sites in this village, it would not be appropriate to resist it on the basis this is not a sustainable place to accommodate new housing growth. Um, perhaps the other point to pick up on is, is about the, the, the flooding and the foul sewage um, concerns. Of course, this has come up before in this part of the borough and in particular in Allfold. And as officers, we do fully appreciate the concerns of members and indeed the many residents that write in about applications concerned about these essentially operational issues in relation to the existing infrastructure. But of course the test for a planning application is not is the existing situation working well, is the statutory undertaker performing effectively and properly against their statutory duty. That is an operational matter and one which there are quite a few um, bits of dialogue going on around the borough about supporting Thames Water and actually performing better. But the test is not for this applicant to rectify any perceived ills on Thames Water, but to be satisfied through Thames Water that additional growth could be accommodated without um, undue pressure on the system. And I know that's probably difficult to believe that the case 
is acceptable, bearing in mind concerns at present, but that is the proper planning test. And indeed, with surface water drainage, paragraph 103 of the NPPF requires that the site be capable of draining without flood risk to new residents or off-site. Not that. Has anyone ever seen this site flood in the past? Because that is not the, the planning test. So I would remind you of those key tests before coming to a conclusion on those issues, because if we were to refuse these applications on that basis, we would be very heavily um, penalised on appeal. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Elizabeth. Councillor Goodridge. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I think the first thing I want to say is that it's been suggested that if we grant planning, that uh, various people will lose their jobs and it will affect uh, a business. Uh, it seems to me, um, having done my site visit this afternoon at about half past four, um, when, when Wyville Garden Centre say that the current site at uh, Allfold is, is not viable or not, not commercially viable, um, I have to um, see that there is some evidence to support that in that there were only two other cars in the car park when I arrived uh, and the chap doing the car wash was sitting under the, uh, uh, the trailer out of the sun with nothing to do and I walked round the garden centre and I didn't see any other member of the public, just staff. So and I appreciate it's a Monday afternoon and maybe not the busiest time for a garden centre but um, when one goes to other garden centres not that far away from here, uh, from there, um, they, they seem to be more busy. The other point I was going to make has already been made in that conditions four and five are there to cover the problems with, um, uh, that have been outlined about drainage and flooding. Um, and I, as a layman, one has to say that when one looks at the garden centre, which is, apart from the very bit at the back, totally tarmacked, usually what we're being told is um, when you start tarmacking uh, what is virgin earth, um, it presents more flooding problems. Uh, and presumably, the gardens of these houses are not going to be 100% tarmac. There's going to be some earth. Uh, and therefore, there will be the possibility of uh, draining, obviously, the surface water drainage naturally into the ground, which doesn't seem to be something that can happen currently on this site. I, I, it is a matter of weighing up the advantages against the disadvantages, and I, I will make my mind up totally when, when I've heard all the arguments. But uh, at the moment, I, I do think, uh, on balance, that it's right for this site to be developed. Uh, and and possibly for what, our, um, um, what Elizabeth Sims has said, to, to uh, ensure that we use it to the best possible way, uh, to ensure that we don't put pressures elsewhere on green, site, on, 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 um, green sites. But I haven't made my mind up totally at the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, unlike Councillor Coburn, I had a couple of afternoons off during the... Uh, inspection of our local plans or examination of our local plan but I did hear the inspector say on more than one occasion the numbers allocation is minimum numbers so just a thought Councillor Forresky thank you chairman um, I'm really struggling here um, and I think I'm struggling because we've been given two options one for 10, one for 27. I know we have to consider them in their individual merit, but one blights the other because we can see the advantages or the disadvantages. Um, I, I look at the report and I look at the comments from the Allfall Parish Council and they do not object in principle to the development, which I think is very positive. I appreciate much of what um, Councillor Dean has said, and I know this area very, very well, having been a former previous ward member for the area and I think that you um, Orthold is a unique remote rural location if we talk about um, over developing this site we're then looking at the possible um, urbanisation and um, encroaching into the more being a suburb of Cranley then Dunsfold etc etc so I, am, I, I think 
knowing the site and knowing the village, if we're looking for the best outcome, the second application that's up for refusal would have been a, be a far better option because it suits the village and its atmosphere better. Because of all the services that it doesn't have, as I say, it's unique, it is remote, it is in an area where, you know, if you are struggling, you're going to struggle to get around. And I, the, 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 the one thing that really bothers me as well is employment, whether a business is doing well or not, we've got, we're not here to decide upon that because we don't have the viability reports to actually prove that that's the case. Um, but we are going to lose jobs from that location. It is actually quite a successful um, garden centre, and although quiet this afternoon, it's not normally that quiet. But as I say, losing the employment there, so you know, I, I'm almost gearing towards what Councillor Dean has said about a deferral under option two of the next application to look at a deferment, because um, we, that could be better use made of that site. It's a brownfield site, which I fully appreciate that it should be developed. It's in zone one. We should perhaps look at a mixed development. I know that's a separate application, but that's where I'm getting confused is because we've presented with two different scenarios and one, in my opinion, seems a better option. If I didn't have that one, I couldn't deny this one. So for me, I will listen to the debate further with, some, uh, with great interest, but I think um, that we could be doing better with this site, retaining the houses and the employment by being more creative. And um, the applicant has already said that they were happy with the second application. It's for us to sort of shape it a little bit with the officer's help to see if we can get the best out of it so we get the best for the, this village, which is a unique place to live and not to be compared to Cranley. Thank you for that. Councillor Munner. Thank you very much, Chairman. Having been down there this afternoon, like Councillor Goodrich, but obviously a little bit later, um, I share his comments, but it's a very small sample. The site itself is flat and very well treed, so from a visual aspect, I can't see much to object. But it seems to me very difficult to ignore the points made by Councillor Dinas about sewage. And it does occur to me that we are talking about a local plan for 15 years until 2032, and rejecting this application in 2017 does not rule out a future application being approved when flooding and sewage have been solved. I think we're in the classic chicken and egg situation. Um, one of the best arguments for approving the large applications is because they do provide the substantial capital required to make the improvements that are needed. And I fear that this application does not meet that test. And it seems to me that the residential amenity, not merely of the residents of this area, but of others, could be very badly affected if these sewage problems continue. So I do incline to the idea that if any development is suitable on this site today, smaller would be better. I'm also influenced by the argument about affordable housing. And I do would be grateful if the officers could guide me on two matters, one of which affects this. I mean, why is it that the Alfold local affordable housing requirement document is now felt to be out of date and has not been referred to? It would seem to me that if there is not really a need in Oldfold for nine affordable homes, if that's true, then it does seem rather pointless to put extra homes here for people who might not be able to travel to other parts of the borough with ease. My main concern, and like many, I'm somewhat left in doubt, is that if there are serious sewage problems, then it strikes me as a very strange way of ignoring that aspect of residential amenity to give permission for a site which is likely to worsen them. And so my view at the moment is that there is nothing against this site in principle over the long term and the life of the plan, providing that somehow the flooding and sewage issues are dealt with properly. But I have heard nothing from anyone to suggest that they are going to be coped with any time soon. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hyman. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think I've heard um, already what, what one of my major questions was the, the, the 18 homes that are left of the um, LAA, uh, the allocation of 100. 
um, with 18 remaining and uh, lots more than that's in front of us tonight, is um, effectively overridden by what's been going on at the uh, examination in public for Local Plan Part 1. Um, I think we're being told effectively that we can't refuse it on those grounds. Um, uh, because of the, it seems obvious to me that if that still does apply, then um, uh, there's only one of the applications before us tonight which would be accommodated within there, but uh, that appears to be by the by. Um, we are, I think there's some, some confusion, certainly in my mind, why we've got a, a committee report which is full of all sorts of different issues, but we're being told that we're only able to talk about access and layout or consider the access and the layout. Now, um, there's a, quite a lot about him, um, the flooding and uh, other issues and drainage in the report. Uh, we can talk about those, can we, or refer to them as other members have. There's no reason why we should not, I take it. Because I, I, I do Correct. have, I mean, I, I, I'm quite concerned that we were told uh, at the very beginning in the report that it is, and I quote, not possible to refuse permission on flooding grounds. Um, now, I've known in a number of applications that have gone before various Waverley committees, before I was a councillor, there have been significant errors in flood risk uh, assessments. Uh, and I think that we have to be able to, if there are errors and problems, that we have to be able to um, re refuse consent. So, um, and we were also told that whether it has flooded is not, whether the site has flooded before is not the test, whether we've seen flooding there. Um, Surely the test is really in that whether or not the flood risk assessment provides an accurate uh, picture of what the flood risk of the site is. And that is determined by what we've seen compared to what the flood risk assessment says. And uh, I haven't seen anything which tells me where flood zone three, the, where, where visible flooding that we would have seen in the part, you know, over a hundred year period, like the 100 year return um, event, um, and, and one might consider the highest level that would be what we saw in 13, 14, then what people have reported. I, I don't see how that fits with the flood risk assessment that, uh, that, that I've read in the, um, that's on the website. Um, it, it seems to be completely at odds to it, and I would question why are we told that we can't refuse consent on, on those grounds when I see that there's something which to me, the same as with the later application, seriously wrong with what we're being told in the flood risk assessment based on what is, um, obviously it's only based, the flood risk assessment is based on what uh, the environment agency have in their records. And I know for a fact, and I can refer you to exactly where it says it, the LLF, LLFA um, stated in a planning application in 2014 that they had had serious data collection issues in respect to the flooding in the uh, main event, so Christmas 2013 event. They didn't know what flood levels were reached. And um, I think we've got problems, particularly all over Cranley, with the, uh, with the flood levels that are being applied in these flood risk assessments. So, um, you know, please, can you clarify in that context whether it is true that we are unable to consider that as a reason for, uh, for refusal? Because it seems obvious to me where people have seen the sites flood, um, that needs to be considered by us. And just for the applicant to say there is no uh, flooding on the site and never has been, um, and for us to rely on that seems a bit odd. Um, I would like some clarification also of Mr. Clark's comments, please, um, in, in, in respect of it being for us to grant consent this evening being a reportable offence. I'd like you to tell us what uh, risk the council is at in respect of uh, granting consent when we know that it's a blue asbestos risk. I think that's what he was referring to. Um, so I'd like clarification there, please, as well. And um, in respect of uh, employment land assessment, I think it's, I remember it saying in the report that we don't need one. Um, what weight can we give to its existing use as, uh, as an employment site? I'd like to see, sort of like eight, if, if, the, if the garden centre can remain there as an employment site and have eight houses around it and be made to fit nicely or whatever, that would seem ideal to me, but um, that's not what we've got in front of us tonight. Um, and I'm thinking... Do we need to know whether it's viable or not? Um, do we need a viability assessment or do we just have to take the um, applicant's word and, and Mr. Goodridge's word that it's not? Um, it, it, because as far as I'm concerned, I've seen a number of applications in the past where we've had viability reports, all sorts of in-depth uh, reports. Do we need right. that or not? So okay. Can, can we've my got, we've got your those? questions. I will ask Elizabeth Sims to uh, respond. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I, I think you've asked four questions, Councillor Hyman. Perhaps I could just take them in turn. Um, I, I, 
I'll start with the, um, the issue of the loss of employment. The report does um, advise members that this is a retail use as a garden centre. There is no policy objection to this type of loss of retail use. It is not a loss of um, employment under the IC policies, which only relate to business classes. So it is a judgment, but in the end, of course, the most up-to-date um, policy guidance to you is the National Planning Policy Framework, which advises that the provision of housing would, in this instance, trump the existing use. Now, I realise there may be some local sense of what perhaps it'd be nice to retain this use, but I think it would be very, very difficult to construct a policy argument seeking to retain the garden centre per se. You need to balance it against the benefit of housing in terms of MPPF policy. The second point is about the, uh, the asbestos in the, in the, um, the pipes. Um, I think that was raised by the public speaker, and in fact, um, that particular a resident, Mr. Clark, I know is, has been aware of some advice from our environmental health team, um, been, have been in dialogue with them, and we've reassured a residents interested in this point that, again, this is not a planning issue as such. This is an operational matter, and the drinking water inspectorate have been involved and have been advising Thames Water in relation to the content of asbestos in the pipes. My understanding is there's no health and safety matter to address at this present point in time, but if there is an issue, it isn't a planning matter for you to object to this planning application on. And that's a really important point to bear in mind. Um, the third point was about flooding. Just coming back to the point I made before, Chairman, um, what I was trying to draw members' attention to was the advice in our report in relation to flood risk. And we draw your attention to paragraphs 101 to 103 of the MPPF, um, which basically require um, you to look at flood risk, firstly in terms of the sequential test, but then also if you're applying the exception test, whether or not the exception test applies. In this particular instance, a flood risk assessment has been um, submitted, and we're none of us experts on flood risk. We all have views on it, but in the normal way, we seek the views of the experts on your behalf. And the consultation responses are set out for you. I think it would be very, very difficult, and it's not the first time you've heard this advice from us, to construct an argument around that this, there's an objection to this site and flood risk terms with the basis of the consultation responses that you're being given here. Um, it's, te it's technical matter. Um, and the, you, your, the advice given to you by the experts is that, that this is acceptable in both surface water and foul water drainage terms. Um, and then the final point uh, was about affordable housing, um, and that's come up a couple of times. If this was a rural exception scheme, say, for example, in the Green Belt, where normally housing is unacceptable, um, it would only be acceptable on the back of a housing needs assessment done locally. Um, but in this context, where it's brownfield land and it's a mixed tenure scheme, then as with all other schemes that you've been dealing with across the borough, um, your starting point is the Schmar, and your assessment of, of housing mix is, is derived from the Schmar, and then your housing enabling officer will advise you as the appropriate tenure mix in terms of a borough-wide judgment, and that is the consistent approach across the borough. So to actually insist that this particular site should only be uh, basically providing for all fold residents would be entirely inconsistent with the approach you've taken across the borough um, where housing provision must be seen to provide against the borough-wide need, including affordable housing. So I hope that's covered off your questions, Councillor Hyman and other members. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Holder. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. Um, during this morning's site visit, we were taken up by Councillor Deans up to the Orville, to the uh, A281, and it was very apparent when we were there that there was quite a smell of sewage. It was, uh, <clears throat> and it just occ occurs to me that as the site is on a slope, and as all the water drainage from rainwater goes down to the Loxwell Road, and the Loxwood Road is under the control of Southern Water, and the comments on sewage are from Thames Water, that I do agree with Councillor Dean, who said, I think perhaps I, I'm not in a condition to favour the first application, but I think the second application could be deferred with, on the condition that some 
engineer or, or planning authority should do a sustainable drainage system assessment of the whole site. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Frost. Thank you very much indeed, Chairman. Can I just remind members that we're looking at an outline permission um, and one of the things we should be looking at is the site layout, how the houses are on the particular site. Now, if we don't address that today, we have lost the opportunity to comment on how these 27 houses are going to be laid out on the site. Um, I know there is a lot of concern about sewage, flooding, etc., but I think we've got to actually come down to this particular application. And I want to talk about two things. One is affordable housing on this site, and the other is the site layout. You know, I, I can't do anything about things that aren't part of a planning application, except we can note them and pass them on. Mrs. Simmons just spoke about putting affordable housing on our sites. Now, we know that when the site is over a certain number of houses, we have to put in affordable housing. But I don't agree with the policy that Waverley Borough Council seems to adopt. And I have seen several sites where we have been forced to have affordable housing on it, because that's the policy, but are totally unsuitable for affordable housing on that site. I've got one in my own ward, um, and for me, this is another one. I do not believe this is a suitable site. It is unsustainable, in my view, <coughs> for people that don't have cars, etc., to get around. So personally, I'd like to, when we're looking at sites such as this, to actually look at them and say, ought we to have affordable housing on this site, or ought we to be looking at a commuted sum to put that housing elsewhere? Uh, and I think there is a case in point here where we ought to be looking at it. Now, if we look at the proposed layout, how unimaginative it is. It's just blocks of dwellings, just peppered all over the site. This is a very special place all fold, fold. It is beautiful, it is rural, it is verdant. What we need to have here, and I've seen this again in other sites, <coughs> there is no thought given to how we can lay something out. And if people don't like 27 houses, how can we lay them out to make sure people do like them? And I don't think any attempts be made in looking at that layout there to consider the area the site is in. So I don't know how I'm going to vote on this one, but I certainly think that the developer ought to have used a bit more imagination on layout. And ladies and gentlemen, if you like the layout, say nothing, because after, if we agree the thing tonight, that's your last chance. But if you do, don't like it, then you must say something about it tonight, because outline includes the site layout. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Hunter. I agree with what Councillor Frost has said, um, but uh, what concerns me more is the blue asbestos in the pipe. I worked in an office block where they found a bit of asbestos, and we were kicked out there and now we're expecting people to drink out of those pipes. It's wholly unacceptable. Until this is addressed, I don't think we can approve this application. Thank you. Officers, do you want to come back for a move to the recommendation? Chairman, just to clarify the issue of the southern water um, and the flows of the sewage, which I think Councillor Holder um, raised. Page 16 of 66, southern water have commented um, to obviously say the site is not within their statutory area for wastewater services. Um, however, the site would effectively discharge in that direction towards um, southern water's catchment. Um, and have outlined there that they will um, consult and agree with Southern Water um, and Thames Water 
the means of accommodating the flows from the site. So I think that response probably answers your question. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Councillor Dean, if you want to come back, is something new? You'll be, you'll be impressed that I'm not going to talk about flooding. I'm um, just going to quickly talk about definition of sustainable development, as we've talked about it. Under the economic role, it states available in the right places at the right time to support growth and innovation and by identifying and coordinating development requirements, including the provision of infrastructure. Well, I think it's failed there. Under social, it says with accessible local services that reflects the community needs and supports its health, social and cultural well-being. So forgetting all the arguments about employment and everything else, this is outside the settlement. It's countryside outside the Green Belt. It is overdevelopment. It's not in keeping with the village style that's been raised. It's a poor design. It's in lines, and I totally agree with Councillor Frost on that. It is really unimaginative. It damages the intrinsic beauty of the countryside. And anybody says putting 27 houses there isn't urbanisation. This was suitable for 10 houses. This is what the LAA has put for this site, 10 houses. Wyvale application was for 10 houses. It's Waverley and Wyvale have said, have asked them to put this second application. And that's why I shall object to the first one with a recommendation maybe for a deferment on the second one so further work can be done on those 10 and to look at the issues such as blue asbestos and any other issue so an application can come through which the parish supports that the ward member supports. But this is just being pushed, trying to put a pint in a half pint glass. Thank you. Can we move to the recommendation that... Councillor Frost. Yes, I'm so sorry to come back. Can I just ask one quick question? What consultation has taken place with the people who live in Oldfield? I, I couldn't find it in the report. I probably skimmed it too quickly. Okay, and quickly, uh, Councillor Monday you want to make some Yeah, Just, a, a, just a, a question. Looking at the, at the, the sewage issue, Thames Water who are not going to handle it, make some remarks, which um, are meant to be comforting. But Southern Water, who are going to be handle it, say nothing at all about their, their capacity. I mean, is there any more information to be, to be had that the providers actually think they can cope? Right. Finally, for the officers, and then we'll move to the recommendation. Chairman, just to pick up on Councillor Frost's point about consultation, um, it looks like there has been some consultation with the Parish Council, the Ward Councillor um, and to the surrounding um, properties by the applicant prior to, um, prior to the submission and obviously statutory consultation has taken place as part of the planning application. Anyone else? No? Thank you very much. Let's move to the recommendation. It may not be in the papers, but do the officers have any further information about Southern Water being content? Chairman, if I could just pick that point up. Um, we carry out consultations required of us as, as a planning service and the responses that we receive are received from the statutory providers and that is the response that we receive. So it's the bottom of page 19, 19 of 66, 16, sorry, 16 of 66, that is their response. So um, we have nothing else beyond that but that is not indicating any objection to the scheme and that's the in principle point. It would be very difficult to construct an argument around objecting to the scheme on the basis of the comment that they've raised. So, uh, as I said before, I do really appreciate the concerns that con continue around these issues, um, but we're doing what we need to do as planning authority to ensure the, the correct bodies are consulted, and most of what has been 
actually raised is operational about the existing situation as opposed to the, the planning test, which is about whether or not there's sufficient capacity um, available to accommodate new growth, and it's a very important distinction. Thank you very much, Chairman. Fine, thank you. Let's, Councillor Hyman, do you, do you have something original? Thank you, Chairman. I thought you were refusing to uh, allow us to wrap up. It's on uh, further to um, the response we've just had to Councillor Mulliner's point, and um, it's in respect of it not, we're being told it's not a consideration for us because it's an operational issue, whether that's the sewerage or the, or the blue asbestos, it's providers, it's uh, infrastructure providers or whatever, um, the utility providers' uh, uh, problem, not ours. But I know that in other applications we have imposed Grampian conditions, and obviously if we're able to propose if we've done that in the past, then we surely haven't simply been treating them as an operational issue, and it seems a contradiction. So I'd like to know whether we could, if we were minded to grant consent, impose a Grampian condition in respect of matters such as the sewerage and the blue asbestos, or whether we could not. So that's further to, to I think, what um, a Councillor Mullen were, was getting to. And... Um, where do we stand when we know the experts are wrong? I suppose will be another question. But uh... well, are the experts wrong? Um, we are looking at an outline application. I say it again: with all matters reserved except for access and layout for the erection of 27 homes. So, can we move to that recommendation, please? Recommendation A: that subject to the completion of a Section 106 agreement to secure a contribution towards education environmental enhancement, place-based provision, recycling, highway and footpath improvements, the provision of 33% of affordable housing and the, and the proposed mix, the provision of on-site place space and the provision of a management company, SUDS maintenance and management, permission be granted subject to conditions. Those in favour, please show. Eight in favour. Those against? Abstentions? Two. Two. Eight. Motion is lost, therefore can I have a proposal, a seconder and reasons for refusal. Councillor Dinas. I'm sure they can work something from what I say, so I've proposed a refusal. My apologies. You have a seconder, Councillor Gray, and your reasons for refusal. Okay, so if I just read them off, and please, obviously, I've stated it's outside the settlement and it's countryside, um, outside the green belt. It's, it's the overdevelopment not keeping with the village style, it's poor design, it's damaging the intrinsic, intrinsic beauty of the countryside and it's uh, urbanisation of that site. I don't know if you, I have more, but is, is that sufficient? When you say poor design, do you mean layout? The, the layout is very poor. Thank you. And I've mentioned, obviously, sustainability and uh, the definition and how it doesn't meet any new facilities. Th th thank you, Chairman. Um, so just to rehearse that, I suggest the reason, then, is that the... Um, the development would harm the intrinsic character of the countryside um, in view of its um, overdevelopment of the site, its adverse impact on the um, character of the village, poor design and um, urbanising effect on the amenity of the area, contrary to um, policy C2 of the local plan and uh, paragraph no, uh, 17 of the MPPF. Is that? 
Core Designer layout, yes. Sorry. Sorry. We have therefore a recommendation. You've heard the uh, reasons. So, Ch Chairman, sorry, there would also need, we need to add on the um, holding reason for the failure to agree the Section 106 agreement, which is um, the same as the reason recommended for this for the next application, actually. Two. On page. Page 2 on 51 and 52. Oh, sorry. Yeah. But it's the same yeah. So, page 51 and 52 on the second report, reasons two, which is failed to secure affordable housing, and number three, which is failed to enter into a legal agreement to secure infrastructure contributions. So, three reasons for refusal in total. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Councillor Dinas, uh, are you satisfied with those reasons? Yeah, as long as it includes, obviously, the sustainability of the site. I would guard against that reason because I think it would be very difficult to defend it on appeal. As I say, coming back to what I said at the beginning, that the local plan has found that the village, through the spatial strategy, is capable of accommodating new development. I think, I think if you try to persist with that reason in principle, this is not a location for new development, uh, I think we would find that very difficult to defend on appeal and the council will probably be awarded costs against it for unreasonable behaviour. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Frost. Thank you, Chairman. Then in which case, could we reword it to something like lack of transport links for local facilities like schools and doctors and all the rest of it can we reword that word sustainability because that's what we're talking about people can't get anywhere without a bus or a car and the people who are going to live in the units which is social housing may not have that facility readily available lewis i think you want to come in don't you thank you chair um i would uh, reiterate what Elizabeth said, that um, arguing um, that it would be unsustainable, which I think what you're saying does come back to. I think you're trying to put it in other words. Um, I would agree with Elizabeth that that would be um, unreasonable in, in, in this circumstance. I also find uh, sustainability very difficult because there are a fair number of people who live in the village and they find it sustainable one way or another. Ch Ch Chairman. Can we try another way uh, in terms of the uh, uh, unsuitable location for affordable housing? <coughs> Elizabeth? I, Chairman, I don't think you can differentiate no. between the suitability for housing of, of any tenure in particular. Fine. Let's, let's move to the recommendation, please. We have a recommendation from Councillor Dina, seconded by Councillor Gray, to refuse on the grounds that uh, have been given. Those in favour, please show. Nine in favour. And the opposite view, please. Six. Abstentions? Four, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. The application A1 is refused. We move on to uh, application A2, WA 2016. Chairman, may I ask a question about the applications in general, which is puzzling me slightly? Um, maybe my memory is um, flying from my uh, head in old age, but it used to be unusual for layout to come in as outline. If we look at, for instance, application 6, uh, all matters reserved except access. And that used to be, unless my mind is straying, quite normal. It seems to be unusual to put layout in at um, outline. Um, is my memory at fault, or is there a special case for the one we've just discussed? I did emphasize that several times during the debate, um, but I agree with you. Uh, 
Elizabeth Sims, would you care to answer? Thank you, Chairman. It's absolutely up to an applicant to decide which details they submit at outline stage. Um, and yes, you're right, Councillor Ward. Um, our experience has been, generally speaking, most applicants seek to want to minimise the cost to outline and just establish the principle. But I suspect over the years, they've probably noted that members do like more information to help them on the principle. And perhaps that's why they've been putting out a layout in to help you understand how the, the scheme could work. Um, but they're, they're not obliged to do that. It is a choice. It's for the, perfectly within their, their limits to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So, application for planning permission A2, WA 2016-0114, Olfold Garden Centre, Horsham Road, Olfold. Outline application for the erection of 10 dwellings, including two affordable, with associated access works following demolition of the existing garden centre buildings, the associated works, access and layout to be considered at outline, as amended by plan received on the 20th of April, 2017. And Joe Dawes, again, all yours. Thank you, Chairman. Um, again, before I go um, to the main presentation, just drawing again to a couple of typing errors about the reference to the Joint Area Committee. Um, and again, the words objection has been admitted from the list of um, representations. Given that the site is the same as that considered in the last item, I don't intend to go through the site circumstances or the photographs again. I have produced them on the, um, on the overhead, but I, I won't talk to them. Turning to the presentation, this application is in outline, again, with the access and the layout to be considered at this stage. The application seeks permission to erect 10 dwellings on the site. If I talk you through the plan, sorry, it doesn't seem to have come up particularly clearly. It is in your agenda on page 6 of 52, if that's any clearer, and I will try and talk you through. These are two, the two affordable units. Uh, one is a one-bed, one is a, a two-bed unit. We don't have any details of any of the other, um, any of the other units. That's the only, ones, the only two um, units that we have details of, of what the mix would be. As previously advised, the site is in the countryside beyond the green belt, outside of any defined rural settlement area, although it is considered again to be previously developed land, currently operated as a garden centre falling within a retail use class. As previously advised, the site lies in the countryside beyond the green belt, and given that policy C2 is considered to be out of date, the tilted balance in favour of sustainable development, again as set out in paragraph 14 of the MPPF, will apply. Of the proposed 10 units, Two are indicated to be affordable, which represents 20% 20 20 provision on the site. Whilst this would contribute towards housing in the borough, it's considered that such a small proportion carries less weight in favour of the scheme than as would be the case if the proportion was higher. Furthermore, in relation to the proposed mix, whilst no details have been provided as to the size of the proposed units, it's clear from the submitted layout, which is a matter for consideration now, that the units are large detached buildings. Concern is therefore expressed that the proposed mix would not provide a good mix of dwellings in line with local plan policy, the 2015 Schmar and paragraph 50 of the MPPF. It's also considered that given the site is previously developed land, the proposal wouldn't make an efficient use of that site. As previously advised, the site lies within flood zones 1 and as such residential development would be an appropriate use. In the absence of any technical objection from either Thames Water or the local lead flood authority, it's considered it wouldn't be possible to refuse permission on flooding grounds in this instance as previously discussed. The proposal includes on-site car parking in accordance with the council's parking guidelines and also provides for an on-site lap and that is in this location here. So it's a local area of play. No objections have been raised on highway safety grounds. Whilst the applicants have agreed to enter into an appropriate legal agreement to sort, secure the provision of £36,409 worth of infrastructure contributions, this has not yet been completed. Officers consider that the adverse impacts which would result from this modest scale of development in terms of the inevitable suburbanisation of the countryside and having regard to the limited proportion of affordable housing and the proposed mix of dwellings, which would not create sufficient, sufficiently mixed communities, and would not make an efficient use of land, 
would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits in this instance. Consequently, consequently this application is recommended refusal, for refusal as set out on pages 51 to 52 of the agenda. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Joe. Again, we move to the uh, public speaking. So can I call on uh, Adrian Clark? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, Cranny Civic Society objects to this application for two reasons. Our first objection is that the applicant has not demonstrated acceptable sewage provision proposals. This application forms between Thames Water and Southern Water, and no account has been taken of capacity at the sewage treatment works and the receiving water body, as required in NPPF and WFD, and if you look at page 15 of 52, um, you'll see there's a note, but I'll just allow you to just go to that. I hope you'll give me a few more seconds, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, so you can see on page 15 of 52 that um, Southern Water is saying proposed development is not located within Southern Water's statutory area for water supply, drainage and wastewater services. Um, there's a note earlier on um, saying about uh, Thames Water's comments. Um, and somewhere you guys have to take into account, um, because that's what the MPPF says, what the provision is as part of your assessment, I think. That's just my humble opinion. The um, second objection is that the applicant has not assessed impact on nearby properties served by asbestos cement drinking water pipes. Asbestos is a banned substance under the Health and Safety at Work, etc. Act 1974. Um, that act trumps anything that the drinking water inspectorate say. It's just the law. Um, Cranley Civic Society have um, looked at all of the documents, the database, in the Drinking Water Inspectorate's um, records, which anyone can go and access. And they based everything on white asbestos. Um, I just think you should take some note of that. Um, Thames Water confirmed in March that all the asbestos drinking water pipes in our area, including Allfold, are white asbestos. The Drinking Water Inspectorate say that there is no consistent proven risk to public health. White asbestos is a banned substance in the UK and is the least dangerous out of the six different types of asbestos, the worst being blue asbestos, which is often quoted as 500 times more dangerous. But the Health and Safety Executive is at odds with the Drinking Water Inspectorate on this. HSE's website states that the pipes manufactured before 1969, and as far as we can see, these were put in long before then, were made with blue asbestos. We're very grateful to our MP, Anne Milton, for asking Thames Water to get an independent test done on a random sample of pipe dug up in Cranley. We are in the same area. The test was done 10 days ago, and it was confirmed to be blue asbestos. Blue asbestos drinking water pipes have a maximum design life of 70 years, and we're nearing that lifespan. As pipes age, the internal surface degrades and pipes start to rupture, releasing more free asbestos fibres into the drinking water supply. Unlike white asbestos, which has curly fibres and is more like cotton wool, blue asbestos comprises sharp needle-like fibres which can pierce membranes in our gastrointestinal tract. New houses have to be supplied with one bar water pressure to meet the new building regulations. And the applicants' new houses will, be put, will put strain on an already deteriorating asbestos cement pipes close to the applicant's site. Anne Milton is organising a meeting in Cranley on the 24th of July to discuss asbestos cement pipes in this area of Surrey. She is inviting the Drinking Water Inspectorate, Thames Water, the Environment Agency, Waverley Borough Council and Cranley Civic Society to attend. And it's a public meeting, by the way. If you approve this application tonight, we will present this to the Health and Safety Executive as a reportable offence on the basis that we warned Waverley about this in a detailed risk assessment issued in January and again verbally tonight. Thank you for allowing me to go a few seconds Thank over. Joe Mail.
Thank you, Mr Chairman. This application relates to the same site area yeah, at Oldfield Garden right. Centre as the previous application. Therefore, it should be considered within the same context, namely as a site which has been identified as a deliverable housing site within the Council's le land availability assessment, and one on which the provision of housing is consistent with both policies SP2 and ALH1 of the emerging new local plan. The application proposes the erection of eight detached dwellings and a pair of semi-detached bungalows on the site's road frontage. A local area of play is also included within the layout. The scheme was designed in order to reflect the character of the surrounding area, which is typified by well-spaced, two-storey detached dwellings. The pair of bungalows are intended to provide two accessible, affordable units which will meet the specific need for affordable housing within the parish, which is set out in the Oldfold Housing Needs Survey. This indicates a need for a one-bedroom unit of affordable rented accommodation and a two-bedroom unit for shared ownership. The draft Section 106 agreement, which was submitted in support of the application, reflects these tenures. The current site is highly developed with commercial buildings and extensive areas of hard standing. The application proposes a significant reduction in the level of built form on the site, offering opportunities for additional planting and significant greening of the site, which could be secured as part of a landscaping scheme. Existing planting on the site's southern and western boundaries ensures that the development ha would have limited visual impact within the wider landscape, although the applicant is happy to address the issue of more appropriate boundary screening as part of any reserve matters application. The layout and spacing of the proposed units ensures th that the development will not have any adverse impact upon the amenity of any adjacent occupier as recognised in the officer's report. <coughs> Similar to the previous scheme, amendments are proposed to the existing access to make it more domestic in scale, connecting it to the existing footways to north and south of the site, and widening that to the south of the access to link through to the petrol filling station. The transport statement which accompanies the application confirms that the construction of 10 units on the site would lead to a net reduction in traffic movements to the site throughout the day, including at peak times. In addition to securing the affordable housing, my client has indicated a willingness to enter a Section 106 agreement to secure financial contributions towards the provision of education infrastructure, recycling containers, and incentive funding for bus tickets. The application falls to be considered against the tilted balance set out in paragraph 14 of the MPPF. The application proposes a sustainable form of development reusing a previously developed site in an edge of settlement location which offers reasonable access to local facilities and public transport. The application will secure new housing to contribute towards the council's housing supply in a manner which reflects the current character of the area and which secures affordable housing which will meet the specifically identified needs for Oldfold. The development will not have any adverse impact on the amenities of adjacent occupiers or the character of the area, and in the absence of any other material considerations, the tilted balance weighs in favour of approving this application. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Can I just uh, ask Mr. Adrian Erica, you, I've got a script here that says you didn't wish to uh, speak on this application. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Right, members, down to you. Councillor Holden. Uh, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> Can I refer on p to page 12 of 52, uh, Thames Waters' comments, that there are public sewers crossing close to the development in order to protect public sewers and ensure that Thames Water can gain access to those sewers for future repair and maintenance. Approval should be sought from Thames Water where the erection of a building would be over the line of or would come within three metres of a public sewer. Can I, can I just find out from the application whereabouts this building is and where the public sewers are? Because I think that's important to this application. <clears throat> Joe Dawes will uh, answer that. Do you want... Joe. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yep, now I have a plan showing that the foul sewer sort of runs sort of along there. Mm. Sort of rough line. So 
well, I'm sort of looking at a plan and trying to relate it to a different plan here, but it's, it sort of comes to the back of the existing Medland House along this line, and it comes out in front of the petrol filling station, I think. So it's sort right of in that right stage. over the building where the toilet is, uh, by the car wash. So it's along the front of the site. Yeah, roughly there. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Councillor Dinas. Thank you. Um, can we turn to page 11, please? Allfold Parish Council. It says, Allfold Parish Council does not object to the proposed development, although regrets the loss of the facility of the village and loss of employment. But you've actually got a parish council supporting a development of 10. And to prevent urbanisation, I would support 10, if I'm honest. Um, and land availability assessment 2015 said there should be 10. Now, I appreciate when you look at the reasons for their refusal, it talks about a mix of houses and a 106 hasn't been signed. But I think there's also some really important points that have been raised by the speakers about water quality, asbestos, and there's meetings coming on. And I just wonder whether we'd be better off tonight going for a deferral on this one so we can work with the um, applicant who in their letter has clearly stated they were happy in, with the 10 and has spoke very well tonight saying that that 10 is a good application. So we can review that application to make sure it is one that we all support, not just support locally. And I just wonder whether a deferment would allow that other than a refusal, which we have got to do because of the 106. And then we, I, I think that is a good location for 10 houses, you know, and it's a shame, a good application, we've got to refuse. So I'd, your, I'd like to propose a, a deferment. Your proposal, do you have a seconder? I, I'm just going to say I've got leave. Okay. Councillor Forresky, in that case, we will talk to the deferment. Do you wish to carry on, Councillor? Well, I think I've made the points. I think we can get 10 houses on this location, which won't be creating an urban effect on a village. It will be far more in keeping with a village. And it's been said by many people, it's a special village with the countryside and everything else. It's the sort of application we should be supporting for the village. The village wants to support that as one of its key sites. It's identified that, but we're being made to refuse it. So deferment will allow us to get the 106 agreed will allow us to work with the developer to put a better application in. Elizabeth, did you want to come in? I see you in the... Sorry, Councillor. Thank you, Chairman. Um, if members are minded to go with an alternative recommendation to that within the agenda, um, it is obviously within the gift of members to recommend the approval subject to the completion of the section 106 agreement so um, if that is your only reason for seeking to defer the application then an alternative would be to propose a recommendation for approval subject to completion of a 106 and obviously any relevant conditions you feel are appropriate if that clarifies for you Dennis, if you yeah. want to speak to this, because he indicated before everybody else. Councillor Lee, do you want to speak to the deferral first before I turn to Councillor Adams? Thank you, Chairman. No, I wasn't going to speak to uh, the deferral, but I quite uh, support the idea of an alternative recommendation, positive recommendation. Councillor Forresky. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I... I fully support a deferral and not an alternative. And the reason being is this site is crying out for all the things that Councillor Dinas has said. And I, I, you know, it's a brownfield site. We should be doing something about it. We have to consider an alternative opportunity here. And I think that it would be a missed opportunity not to look at it in more detail. And the reason I can't support an alternative approval to the scheme is because going back to the points that Councillor Ward and Councillor Frost made, it's about the layout. So are, if we agree to this, are we agreeing to the layout as well? And I couldn't agree to the layout because I can't see it. I don't know what it is. Yeah. 
I don't know what the tenor is. So I think there's an opportunity here for Waverley ward members, councillors, to actually just take a moment away to defer from this. A quick deferral, I don't know what a quick deferral is, but it's clear that we want to do something on this site, and I think with good negotiations with all parties and for the village and the parish council and something in keeping, we could really come up with something that is productive. And um, the viability of this site depends on the type of housing that's there. So, you know, if there's a viability issue, then that's up for the applicant. But I think missed opportunity, unless I can't say I would support an alternative recommendation, because, as I said, I can't see it. Thank you, Chair. Fine. Uh, i just let you know that I've got Councillor James, Frost, Adams, Hyman and Goodrich. Uh, so, Councillor Jane. Thank you, Chairman. Mine was purely on the 106, because the, on the first application it hadn't actually been signed, but it wasn't a reason for refusal. So, thank you. Councillor Frost. Thank you very much indeed, Chairman. Um, I don't really want to support a deferral. I want to get this one dealt with because the idea of 10 houses on this site, um, I don't like the lap and I don't think if we have 10 houses on this site, we need the lap because they've all got big gardens so children would want to play in the gardens. But I, I do listen to what Mrs. Forachewski is saying. We cannot read the papers in front of us. You know, the one I've got in my paper, I've just got new glasses and I can't read it. This is the one we're working on back here. We can't read that. And we really do have to have documents that we can, well, that's better, than, but I haven't got my laptop here, or my iPad here. So that's no help. Um, but we really do need papers in front of us. I, I like the design of the houses that we've got in this report. I like the fact there's shared ownership, if that was correct, and I heard correctly, and I'm not going deaf as well as blind. Um, but I think this is a much nicer, nicer layout, etc. But if by deferring it we're going to get a better layout, etc., I'll go with deferment. But Ideally, I'd like to go with, let's pass it. Councillor Adams. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I think Councillor Forozeski put it much better than I would have done. But um, I was wondering, perhaps, uh, with this uh, much bigger consultation, because, I mean, we've got one sort of outline of a particular property here. We've got uh, nine other properties or whatever it is without, really, they're all different by the looks of things, which is a good thing. Um, but I was wondering if, in fact, the consultation and the discussions, the, if it, when it comes forward after the deferral, it could be for a full application uh, for both the, um, not outline, but a full application. Yes, indeed. Um, but, uh, Councillor Hyman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I mean, I agree with Councillor uh, Frost and Forashevsky in terms of this is a certainly looks like a better layout, but I really can't see it, so I can't be sure. Um, whether we want a lap in there, it would have to change. Um, so I'd want clarity, and I'd, I'd certainly want to defer on those grounds alone. But there's a, there's certainly I would like to have answers to the questions which um, I've already asked, but I haven't really, well, I haven't heard any clear answers to, to the particular ones. Um, I mean, in respect of the flood risk of this site, I, from what people have told me, um, because I don't live there, uh, the, there, there is uh, some, some difference between what is indicated in the flood risk assessment and what is... Uh, um, but, you know what people have seen in reality and therefore I would want to check that um, but most certainly because all of the drainage everything depends upon getting those flood zones right so we can't go forward to having proper um, drainage systems on the site and suds and uh, we know that this uh, clay ground doesn't infiltrate very well so it is a difficult subject so when and when it comes forward um, I would certainly want to know what the flood zones are so I'd like further information certainly in terms of what uh, you know the, the expertise here uh, because I do remember an application in Farnham a particularly controversial one where I pointed out that uh, they had the river flowing uphill and so they were going to have to go away and redesign it well that's what the experts sometimes come up with rivers that flow the wrong direction because they had a flood risk assessment up uh, 
downstream, which had a, a, a higher flood level than, uh, than, than upstream in the main site, and obviously that can't happen in real I'm life. I'm sure the officers will get back to that. So, uh, it's um, flood zone one. But, um, it, well, that's what we're being told, but um, that means it never floods, not in a thousand years. Anyway, um, so, th so what I'd like, please, is uh, I'd, I'd like a clear answer to the question of can we require a viability report, a viability assessment? Can we require one? Um, I'd like to know, so my second point is, um, when it's evident that the drinking water assessment is based on flawed or mistaken or errant information, um, would it be risky for us, uh, would, it, would it be um, right for us to dismiss this matter as an operational issue? Sort of don't blame us, Genfeld Tower, whatever. You know, we, we are, cannot be put in the position where we don't know whether we are liable for something which could have serious health implications. And, we, and I think the question there, that goes to my question of... Um, if these are operational issues and risks and not planning matters, how come the council, this JPC, has used Grampian conditions in the past? Because the two don't go, do they? If we can either do it or we can't. And it's, uh, it's can I just stop you, Councillor Hyman? We're uh, speaking to a deferral. Uh, Elizabeth Sims answered your questions on the last one. We're speaking to deferral. Can you well, speak ask that again to after that? the deferral yeah. vote? Well, that's why I'd like a deferral, because I haven't had answered, clear answer to those well, questions. But if they're answered clearly... You, you had a very clear answer, I think, on the asbestos one earlier on. Can I turn to Elizabeth Sims, who indicated she wishes to come in before councillor? Um, Chairman, just a couple of things. We do have um, a submitted hard copy plan here, which I do feel, in fairness to the applicant, I must offer members, if they would like to pass this around and look at it, First hand, if there is that opportunity, you've got it in, you had it on the screen, you had it in your papers, but this would be the clarification of it. And I feel, in, in fairness to the applicant, they've submitted this to us, you should have an opportunity to look at it if you would like that. So that, that's one matter. Um, in terms of viability assessment, um, the applicants are not putting forward a viability case, um, and I'm not sure what we would ask a viability case for, perhaps that could be clarified, but I wasn't too sure what, what, the, what the point of that would be for. Um, sorry. Um, in terms of a Grampian condition, Chairman very kindly said I had answered the question, but just to be absolutely clear, the, the, a Grampian condition to um, request more modelling or further details prior to the commencement of development is asked for by a statutory provider or by a statutory consultee where they require more information to be able to indicate that a development is not acceptable without that information in terms of starting on site. So it's a perfectly appropriate tool where appropriate. In this instance, it's not been asked for, as you can see, for the, the second round of consultation response. But just to clarify what I'd said, I thought twice, what I was trying to differentiate between is just being sucked into an argument, this site can never be developed because we've seen it flood in history is not the test. So I, I, I think I have made that point, and it's the flood risk assessment which should demonstrate the, the capability of the site to be able to be built out without creating further flood risk to the residents or those off-site, and that is the NPPF requirement. So I, I thought I had covered that point, but apologies if it wasn't clear enough. Um, and then finally, with the drinking water assessment, I did cover that point um, previously, so I won't repeat what I said. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much. Councillor Goodridge. Mr Chairman, we have a planning application before us and we have to decide it. Uh, I'm against a deferral. Uh, what I think is being suggested is we defer it so that negotiations can take place between the Borough Council and the applicant to find, to find something slightly different from the one we have in front of us. The procedure that is, is quite clear if we don't like the current application, and it certainly has its some downsides, and if we refuse it, then the applicant can come back and make some amendments and come back with something that is acceptable. So I, I think to suggest that we should defer it in, in the hope that the applicant and the borough council come, come up with some amendments is the wrong way of doing it. Councillor Lee. Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to reflect um, what I regard as being good design um, in this particular um, illustration, 
which um, I was one of the uh, councillors that had have the benefit of an en enlarged uh, on a larger scale drawing um, uh, during the visit uh, this morning so I can see quite a lot of uh, the detail. What I like about this and bearing in mind that it thinks not only of today's vehicle ownership situation but going forward each one of these uh, dwellings has um, associated parking and even more importantly there is sufficient hard standing in front of that garaging and the front door to allow for more than the basic um, vehicles to be parked off road and I think that's a very positive thing uh, for today and going forward so I just wanted to reflect that I think that's very positive and of course on this particular drawing we can make a comparison with Hatch Close and there we have large gardens and we have a similar density to what we have here and therefore it is very much more in keeping with the existing conditions. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Gray. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I also benefit from, uh, from our large copy of the layout. Um, I can see it. It looks good. Um, it's maximising the amount of private amenity space for each house. I'm absolutely delighted that there are proposing two bungalows here. Um, I am disappointed, though, that if I go to page 30 of the report, um, we've repeated that the eligibility be borough-wide. I think the applicant made it very clear that they propose this to be associated with local need and basically taking it from the need survey. And I would like to, I would not want to defer it only for that reason. I think this is an application we should go forward and approve. I don't agree with the deferral, but I'd like to come back on that point about uh, local need. Thank you very much. Let's move straight away to the deferral proposed by Councillor Dinas. Those in favour of deferring this application, please show. Five. Those against? Fourteen. So that motion is lost. We can get back to the debate. Councillor Gray. If I could come back then with my question. Um, is there any reason why this, the eligibility has to be borough-wide and why it can't be a normal cascade uh, favouring local? Um, and if there is no local demand, that it is then made borough-wide? If I could ask the officers for that. Elizabeth Sims. Thank you, Chairman. I just refer, um, Councillor Gray, back to my earlier um, response, that that isn't our, our borough-wide approach, um, that our general expectation is sites across the borough where they are mixed tenure um, will provide affordable housing to meet the needs in our schmar, which reflect a borough-wide need. And that is consistently how we approach um, affordable housing on um, not exception scheme sites. Um, so that has the benefit of, of achieving an optimum level of affordable housing to meet the needs of all our residents, as opposed to focusing so tightly on very local needs to the disadvantage of some areas of the borough, which are much more constrained and don't have the opportunity to provide affordable housing on sites coming forward. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Hyman. Thank you, Chairman. I mean, I'm minded to possibly to grant consent to this, but I would certainly like to ensure that that was, if possible, subject to Grampian conditions in respect of water supply and waste to make sure that we cover ourselves and, uh, and, and, and listen to what we're being told about the problems. And so I'm wondering... It's, it's not us to do that. It's not for us to de determine that. that, we, that, that yeah. Because... 
Chairman, I hesitate to bring up stuff which I haven't discussed with officers before, but I have been very exercised by this issue, and there is NPPG guidance which seems to indicate the other. And um, this is in a document which is obviously, um, I can give you the, the para paragraph number, 020 reference ID, etc. Um, but the paragraph here does seem to indicate that it's something we should be concerned about. It says, when drawing up wastewater treatment proposals for any development, the first presumption is to provide a system of foul drainage to discharge into a public sewer to be treated at a public sewage treatment works. Um, and then it goes on to, on, on to say, the timescales for works to be carried out by the sewerage companies do not always fit with development needs. In such cases, local planning authorities will want to consider how new development can be phased, for example, so it is not occupied until any necessary improvements to public sewage treatment works have been carried out. Now, it's not a Grampian condition, but it seems to be a, trying to achieve the same thing, that you don't actually put people into houses until you can be sure that the wastewater treatment is adequate. And I wouldn't call it a Grampian condition, but is it, is it I would ask Mrs. Sims, is there any reason why we as the local planning authority should not impose such a condition in a case like this? I don't know whether that's Lewis's... Thank you, Chair. Um, without being able to read, the, uh, read it myself, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to um, provide you with m much guidance specifically on that um, passage, but I, 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 I would reiterate that we get our steer from our statutory consultees. Um, if they thought said works were necessary, I'm sure we could um, re require a Grampian condition and, 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 and agree that with them. But again, I think in the absence of them requesting one, I think it would be un unreasonable for us um, to require one. I, I, I think it's quite simple, um, to, to be honest. Um, I, I would, of course, like to have a read through that passage that you did just quote so I could give you a fuller answer. But until I'm able to, I'm afraid I can't. Councillor James. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I've got no problem with this application. Um, it, it says that one of our um, things is that there should be modest levels of development in the other villages, of which Orfold is one of them. Um, this, and on several pages, the officers have said it's modest. The modest scale of development of 10 units is considered that the proposal would not have any significant environmental effects. So I can see absolutely no reason why we could, should refuse this application. You, you, people can have, they could have an application for 27, which we approve. They could have an application for 10, which we approve. They could have an application for 5, which we approve. It's up to them which one they decide to implement. So I've got no problem with this, Chairman. Councillor Dinos. Just want to actually confirm something with... Uh Ms. Sims, we, we have never said we do not um, support development on this site. I think in your response earlier you said that it's no good keep saying no, no, no to houses. We have supported 10 houses. The parish have supported 10 houses and so have the community. So this is not us saying no. But the, my point I just want to raise is if we turn to page 52, which is after the three reasons for refusal, there are no conditions. And we want, you know, the normal conditions about hours of working, types of material, all the conditions for the first one, in effect, need to be put in for the second one because we cannot support something with no conditions. So you know, please do not think I'm not supporting. I am supporting this small development because it's not urbanising, but the conditions have to be right. Thank you very much indeed. Let me... Elizabeth? Uh, only Chairman to say, of course, because we're recommending refusal for that application, we wouldn't include conditions. But if you're minded to disagree with that and grant permission, of course, we would help you decide and, and choose the appropriate conditions to attach for all the reasons that you said. But that's why there aren't any on there at the moment. Councillor Ward. Um, thank you, Chairman. Maybe I'm missing something here and getting older than I think, but. On the last application, there seemed to be huge concern about asbestos flooded and sewerage. And on this one, there doesn't seem to be that much concern. Are we saying there are going to be 
less sewage and less chance of flooding on this one and we don't mind them having a bit of asbestos or, or have I sort of missed things? And could I, just for my own clarification, we, we all seem to be a bit tied up on Grampian or similar conditions. Can I ask a very specific question? Are we, as a council planning committee, unable to put Grampian conditions on unless a statutory consultee requests them, or can we do them because we want to? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. I think the test of the appropriateness of the condition is whether it's reasonable. There are tests within government guidance about when you should apply conditions. It needs to be necessary, related to development, and reasonable. In this particular instance, um, because of the, the nature of the issue, which is technical, you're relying on the view of the statutory body to indicate whether or not they need any further information or whether prior to the commencement of development <coughs> as a Grampian, they need certain things to happen before development can start. So I would advise you that unless you think they've missed something, which I suggest they probably haven't because they're the experts, that it probably isn't necessary to put it on. If you in any event put it on, of course, you run the risk of the applicant appealing the condition and possibly finding you unreasonable for having put it on, um, or indeed um, applying under Section 73 to vary the application to omit the condition because it wasn't reasonably applied in the first instance. So yes, the choice is yours as planning committee, but I would advise you to follow the advice of, of the source of that, that in this instance, a grampian condition has not been requested. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Just point out we've been here for two and a quarter hours. I don't know if there's anything new to come, but we have another large application to consider. So, Councillor Forrest, could you want to come in before I go to the recommendation? Uh, thank you, Chairman, and I will be brief. Um, my absolute preferred choice would be to see this application have no granted permission. But, like we do time and time again, we can only deal with the information before us. If we have an application that comes back to us with a positive recommendation, with conditions that we can all agree, I think that will satisfy everybody. Thank you for allowing me to come back, Chairman. Thank you. Move to the recommendation, which is on page 15. Sorry, Chair, did we resolve the issue of the conditions? Because I just, I wonder whether there's an additional condition about... No, 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 no. We, we, we are looking at the condition, uh, sorry, the recommendation that is to refuse. If it falls, then we go to the other side. So the recommendation on page 51 is that permission be refused, uh, and the informant is on page 52. Those in favour of refusing this application, please show. Are you agreeing Green. with the refusal? Those voting for refusal of this application? Two. Three. Three. Those are the opposite view. Please show. Abstentions? Three. Four. Thank you very much. I'm just going to ask for advice as to the way forward for the opposite recommendation. So, Elizabeth, could I just ask your opinion? If we go for a recommendation to approve, do the, recommend, the conditions and informatives from the first application go forward with the Grampian conditions and everything else? 
they, they wouldn't automatically, Chairman, because it's a, a different scheme, different scale of scheme, but broadly speaking, the same issues are likely to be relevant. I just wonder in this particular instance whether the committee wants to delegate the power to me as head of planning to apply the relevant conditions consistent with the, the previous scheme. Um, and clearly we can have a dialogue with yourself and the, um, the ward member of any, mem any issues of clarity, but it, it would ensure we are able to double check exactly the right conditions are applied in, in, in accordance with this scheme. That sounds good to me. Councillor Frost. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, could we grant this application subject to suitable conditions, those conditions to be agreed with the Chairman, Vice Chairman, local member and the Head of Planning? Okay, that's, we have a recommendation and a seconder. Can I have those in favour of, oh, oh, sorry, wait a minute, cancer? And a legal agreement. <laughs> sorry, Joe, just. I was going to say, you're going to need some sort of legal agreement to secure the affordable housing, um, the infrastructure provisions, um, all, the, all, that, all those sort of things yeah. as well, but that needs to be built into your, yeah, yeah subject to, yeah. yeah. So, the recommendation is there, is that, uh, can I have those in favour, please show. Seventeen in favour. Those against? Abstentions? Three Thank abstentions. You. That's carried. Moved on. But Excuse me, Chairman. Do we need a recommendation B as well to cover the fact that if they don't complete this section 106? Quite right. Thank you very much, Ken. <laughs> Those in favour of recommendation B that in the I think that's I think that's unanimous. No abstentions? Fine. Thank you very much indeed. On to the third item on the agenda. Application A3, WA 2017-0104, land adjoining Brockhurst Farm, Dunsfall Road, Alford, and Tim Bryson. Thank you, Chairman. Members, this application um, site measures 4.4 hectares and is located on the north side of Dunsfold Road and to the west of the Guildford Road in Olfold. The site is currently undeveloped agricultural land. Uh, an existing agricultural access point is here um, on the western part of the site. Uh, the site is bounded by some uh, resident, existing residential properties here and here and here and over here. This is the proposed indicative layout. The application is an outline application for up to 39 dwellings with all matters, all matters reserved except access. This slide shows the indicative proposed layout for 39 dwellings. The mix of dwellings is proposed as follows. Seven one-bed dwellings, 12 two-bed dwellings, 12 three-bed dwellings, and eight four-bed dwellings, with, which include 15 of these dwellings to be for affordable housing. The affordable housing mix will include seven one-bed dwellings, five two-bed, and three three-bed. Uh, access proposed for our new vehicle and pedestrian access off Dunsfold Road, um, as you can see here. Uh, the existing agricultural access will be closed um, and hedge re uh, reinstated here. Um, a section of hedge road has to be removed to accommodate the access of approximately 15 metres long. Um, as can be seen from an indicative uh, site layout, um, envisage a scheme coming forward with the main access route coming through the site with 
uh, arms or rows coming off it to serve the dwellings. Uh, the finished surface for in internal access road would be subject of the uh, reserve matters application. Uh, each dwelling is anticipated to have allocated on-site parking in accordance with the council's guidelines. Uh, a leap is to be provided on the site, which is here. Um, further to this, you'll see um, a large area of public open space as well, which would serve the development and existing residents of the village. This is a proposed master plan for the site. Um, this drawing does form part of the drawing numbers condition um, and denotes the proposed developable area uh, outlined in orange and the public open space outlined in green. Uh, hatched in black is um, what they've indicated to be buffer zones for additional landscaping and planting. Uh, the pink circle on the site um, is proposed area for the attenuation pond uh, for the suds drainage scheme. Uh, the purple area along the top here, that is proposed for the removal of uh, the existing belt of uh, cypress trees along here to be removed, um, along with replacement planting. Uh, on, on tree removal, the main trees for removal consist of three groups. Um, two groups of conifers, um, so that's here, and there's another small row along here, which you'll see in my site photos, um, and a small group of trees up here, um, which are willow trees, um, and they are small, they have diameter less than 100 millimetres for each tree. Uh, members, just to show you how the scheme has evolved, this is the original submission. Um, so you'll see here that the original application was for up to 45 dwellings. Um, following negotiations with officers, um, we have um, sought to bring in the building and developable area line, and in doing so, the numbers of dwellings have reduced from 45 to 39. Um, so just quickly comparing, you'll see there to there. So take into account some existing curtilages to dwellings, the building line would now be here. But that's just to give you an indication of, of how we've got to where we are. This is the proposed access, um, very simply a two-way access um, in accordance with the highway authority. Um, there will also be a pedestrian access uh, linking further out to the site. So there's the proposed site entrance here. So the proposed access to be secured under a Section 278 agreement, a new pedestrian footpath link up, up to the site to the southeast corner and beyond is proposed. So that is here, as you can see here. There are existing uh, laybys and parking areas here, um, some of them which are informally used by the residents here. Um, so these are to be modified and made formal uh, with formal laybys. So for members who obviously couldn't make the site visit this morning, um, this is uh, some site photographs to go through. So looking at the existing access um, to the site, you'll note here um, it is clearly undeveloped agricultural land. This existing planting of uh, small conifer trees here, that is, they are proposed to all be removed, um, with the developable line, developable area being slightly beyond there. This is taken further back on the Dunsfold Road, um, so the Desi Six access will be closed, uh, and then this new access would come in here. Um, you can just see some existing housing to the southeast of the site along here. This is a view taken west across the site from neighbouring property known as Fairview. Um, on site, members, we were standing about here, just at the start of this large row of conifer trees. Uh, this is a large row of conifer trees on the northern boundary to be removed. Um, as a indicative developable area point, the, on the plan, it starts about here and extends across there. Um, the rest of this will be public open space. And again, from the same property, from its driveway, um, view north across the site, showing the area proposed to be public open space. Um, you'll see the trees, trees along that boundary here. Um, are mainly oak trees. Um, the advice from our tree and landscape officer is that um, the removal of these trees is no objection as they are somewhat, um, you could say, artificial in this rural landscape. Um, 
So there is no objection from the tree officer to the removal of those trees. So members, in terms of determining issues with this application, uh, draw your matters of judgment on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, countryside and visual impact. The site is undeveloped and forms part of the natural landscape in the area. The proposal will result in a substantial change to this character. However, the site is not subject to specific landscape designations such as AGLV or AONV, and the proposed developable area would be toward the western part of the site where the site surroundings consist of some residential development. It is considered that the residential development would contribute towards the character of the village. There will be some harm to the designated countryside. However, this is a matter of judgment to be weighed in the balance of the benefits of the proposal, for which officers consider that the proposal before committee represents a sustainable form of development. This, of course, is a matter of judgment for members this evening. And residential amenity. The site is adjoined by several neighbouring properties. Whilst the proposed development would be visible from neighbouring properties, it is considered that it has been demonstrated based on indicative layout that an acceptable layout could be achieved for up to 39 dwellings without causing harm. Further, the original scheme, as shown before, has been amended following some objections raised from neighbouring residents regarding the position of the leap in close proximity to their, to their properties. So this, is, this has been moved further away into the public open space. The final scale height of dwellings, appearance and position of windows will be determined on any future matters application. Just in terms of a, a verbal update to conditions, um, following discussions with the agent today, um, I'm proposing an amendment, slight amendment to condition three, which is the drawing numbers condition. Um, and after drawing number 16.011.09 Rev F is to put in brackets indicative only as the indicative layout plan is indicative um, and, not, and the layout um, is not subject to be fixed this evening. Further, drawing number 096.002.003 Rev D should be Rev E. So overall, Chairman, having regard to representations made and comments from the Paris Council and all other matters, officer's recommendation remains as set out in the agenda under recommendation A to grant consent. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Tim. Public speaking now, I call on uh, Alistair Denton Miller. You have four minutes, sir, when you're ready. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, by the way, I live in the house that uh, those photos were taken from today, and you would have seen them during your site visit today. Um, Offold was allocated 100 homes as part of a development plan which is considered appropriate by the Council under policy ALH1. So far we have 92 approved with the 10 that were just approved at the Garden Centre. The balance is achievable and deliverable during the plan period without this application. Offold has no mains gas supply, no school, no doctors, poor water pressure and regular sewage flooding. For amenities the village has one shop and post office, one pub, one restaurant and one garage. That's it. Orfold is served by a very poor bus service with a schedule to and from Cranley that is unsuitable for commuting. Services to Godalming and Guildford are worse and there is no service at all on Sundays. The pre-application advice for this application by Peter Cleveland stated, the pre-submission local plan recognises that Orfold is a small village with limited, limited amenities and that the village would need to accommodate an additional 100 dwellings over the plan period. It goes on to state that it is my opinion that any over-delivery past the allocated numbers in the pre-submission local plan would simply not be sustainable. And the impact of the proposal on the countryside, both in terms of principle and the rural setting of the village, would be considered harmful. Furthermore, I have also raised concerns with the sustainability of developing in this location. The LAA identified this site as having a capability for development of 15 units, not 39. Given this, it can be clearly seen that granting this application will be unsustainable and harmful. Policy SP2 of the draft local plan part one sets out that there will only be limited amounts of development in the smaller villages such as Oldfold. Oldfold's allocation of 100 dwellings is already a 30% growth of the entire village and is by far the largest allocation of all the smaller Waverley villages. This is not limited development and as previously stated by Waverley yourselves, anything above it is unsustainable. 
The officer's report states that the proposal would have limited access to the facilities required for promoting healthy communities, as Alford is not considered to be a sustainable location in terms of available services and facilities. The officer's report then goes on to state that the proposal would replace open fields with substantial urban built form and that the development would be harmful to the character and appearance of the open fields and that it would result in a notably different form of development to the existing surroundings. The officer's report concludes by saying that the site is outside of the settlement and the proposal would conflict with policy C2. It also states that as the council can demonstrate a five-year housing supply that substantial weight should be given to policy C2. Elizabeth Sims stated at the local green space planning session on Friday that as the council can demonstrate a five-year supply, NPPF and protection of countryside for its own intrinsic nature is very important, and this proposal rides roughshod over that. Alford already has other sites being considered as part of our neighbourhood plan process that are preferred by the parish council and residents and would integrate much better into the village than this urban bolt-on. Other smaller proposals on brownfield sites within the settlement boundaries have been denied approval on C2 and MPPF grounds, and the council refused the Springbok application, which is directly across the Dunsfold Road from this site, as being isolated homes in the countryside, unsustainable and causing material and detrimental harm to the countryside, contrary to both policy C2 and MPPF. The council is rigorously defending this decision at the forthcoming public inquiry, so it's impossible to see why this site outside the settlement boundary on greenfield land should be approved as there are no special circumstances to justify setting aside these policies and no benefits to all fold from this application. For all of these reasons, I ask the committee to refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Call on Adrian Erica. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, unfortunately, members, I'm slightly longer than I was last time. Uh, I'm going to mention a slight bullet point, so I apologize again if it doesn't necessarily flow. In the emerging, uh, first of all, is planning policy. In the emerging Waverley local plan, the suggested allocation of new homes for Allfold over the planning period is a minimum of 100. Of this 100, planning permission has now already been achieved for 92 leaving a shortfall of eight, which is deliverable over the planned period. The, planned, the local plan goes on to say that development within Allfold shall be on small sites, and this is accords with the Parish Housing Needs Survey carried out in December 2012, which was adopted by Allfold Parish Council and accepted by Waverley. Waverley's own pre-application advice on this proposal states that any over-delivery past the allocated numbers in the emerging local plan would simply not be sustainable. Regarding location, the site is outside the settlement boundary of the village on greenfield land and in an area of great landscape value. Further, the site virtually adjoins Dunsold Park. Allfold Parish Council considers there should be a distinct separation between the village and Dunsold Park. The Parish Council is very concerned that granting permission for a large development such as this on the edge of the village would create a conurbation between Allfold and Dunsold Park. Allfold Parish Council considers that there are further more further favourable sites in the village that are more suitable for housing and that will be brought forward as part of the ongoing neighbourhood plan. Regarding the highway, the access is onto the Dunsfold Road, which is burned with considerable heavy goods vehicles and other traffic from Dunsfold Park, which leads onto the Allfold Crossways Junction, which is already overburned with traffic, causing not infrequent accidents. The infrastructure... The site is in an isolated position with poor access to services. It is acknowledged by Waverley that Allfold lacks infrastructure for considerable further development. The foul water drainage system is at full capacity and subject to ongoing strategy, uh, studies. The planning statement claims the site is not at risk from groundwater flooding. However, it is a fact that properties in the adjacent Green Lane were severely affected by groundwater flooding in 2013. Therefore, Allfold Parish Council disputes this claim Development on this site is not sustainable and therefore does not accord with paragraph 55 of the MPPF. The applicant has also not assessed impact on the neighbouring properties served by the asbestos cement drinking water pipes. 
Thames Water's own testing in Cranley 10 days ago shows that these pipes contain harmful blue asbestos and the one bar water supply for the applicants' new homes will put strain on these blue asbestos pipes that are nearing the end of their design life and potentially release blue asbestos fibres into the drinking water supply. If you approve this application tonight, it will be presented to the Health and Safety Executive as a reportable offence on the basis that Waverley was warned about this in a detailed risk assessment issued in Juliet. January and has again been mentioned earlier this evening by Mr. Clark. Design. Allfold is a linear village by nature. By virtue of the number of units proposed, it is inevitable that there would be an urban element to this development which does not accord with the village setting. It is for these reasons that Allfold Parish Council asks the committee to refuse this application. However, if the committee is mindful to grant permission for this application, despite all objections, the Parish Council requests a condition that the remainder of the site is allocated as local green space for the benefit of the residents of the parish and is irrevocably deeded to the Parish Council in perpetuity, along with financial obligation for the application to pay for upkeep and maintenance. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <laughs> Good timing. Thank you, sir. Uh, call on uh, David Murray-Cox. Good evening, Chair and Members. Thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. I'd firstly like to thank your officers for bringing this proposal to committee with a recommendation for approval following its robust consideration through the application process. As it was originally submitted to the Planning Authority, this application proposed the development of up to 45 dwellings over a larger area. During the course of the application being considered, the applicant has worked with officers and the extent and quantum of development has decreased. The settlement of Allfold is identified in the emerging local plan as a location for development. Although the local plan part one examination concluded recently, we understand the inspector has not raised concerns about the proposed approach to the distribution of development, including the approach of directing development to the villages, such as Allfold, with the figures for these expressed as minimums. In contrast to other settlements within Waverley Borough, Allfold is not subject to policy constraints which indicate that development cannot be accommodated. For example, this site is not located in the Greenbelt, an AONB, an area of strategic visual importance, or an area of great landscape value. Furthermore, the location of the application site at Allfold Crossways provides the opportunity to accommodate development in an area outside and separate from the conservation area. The site is not subject to any environmental or landscape designations and is within Flood Zone 1 as defined by the Environment Agency. The application submission was accompanied by a detailed landscape assessment which concluded that the site was capable of accommodating the proposed development without resulting material harm to the surrounding countryside landscape character and the views from the wider area. This proposal is for a site which adjoins the settlement boundary of Oldfold Crossways and would not lead to isolated new housing in the countryside. The range of studies that have been undertaken to support this application demonstrate that a high quality development can be achieved at the site and which officers have concluded can be accommodated without harming amenity levels of adjoining properties. This proposal provides for a significant range of benefits including the provision of up to 39 dwellings including both market and affordable housing, the provision of 38.5% affordable housing compared to the draft local plan requirement for 30%, a housing mix which broadly reflects that sought by the Schmar and which officers uh, considers to meet the requirements of policy H4 of the current local plan. The proposal provides for a significant area of publicly accessible open space, including the LEAP, and proposes ecological enhancements through the maintenance of the open space as a wildflower rich lowland meadow with tree and shrub planting in the northern boundary. Although we note the concerns raised by residents, no infrastructure to defici deficiencies have been identified and there are no objections to the proposals from any statutory consultees. Contributions will be secured towards a range of infrastructure improvements, including education, waste, play space, bus stop infrastructure, speed reduction and cycling improvements, and other environmental enhancements. 
In summary, your officers have concluded there is no identified harm, which would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits which would be achieved. There are no environmental, technical or other reasons why planning permission should not be granted in this case. As the officer's report confirms, this proposal will make an important contribution to the Council's ability to demonstrate and then maintain a five-year housing land supply. We therefore respectfully request that the proposals be granted permission in this instance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. I'm sorry about the clock, members. My mistake. My mistake. Um, just a reminder that uh, the application is an outline application for up to 39 dwellings, prov provision of public open space and sites, attenuation with all matters reserved except access, etc. Members, down to you. Councillor Deaners. Unfortunately, yet again, this is in my area, so I need to lead. Um, this application worries me more than the, the 29 at the garden centre, I've got to say. Right, it's an outline application for 39 dwellings, and I think it's been highlighted this is countryside beyond the Green Belt, outside the rural settlement. And I think it's also within the ancient woodland 500 metre buffer zone. Um, turning to page 11, which is the parish council objections, I think these are really substantial and these are really well thought out. It talks about the 100 homes, and I know that's probably been done to death, but we are now on 92 homes, and this will take us to about 129, which is a 29% increase of a very large figure already set. So that is a massive increase with 15 years of the plan still to go. Some very good points have been made about creating buffer zones, um, the isolated services, and I just think the Parish Council have taken a lot of time to come up with this. If you look at county highways, and it talks about the footpath, well, this is the same footpath that we talked about in 2015 when Dunsfold Park wanted the additional um, warehouse areas. And to date, um, we haven't even done any surveys. They haven't um, got the money. They still doubt whether some of the land could be obtained. So we're two years down about creating a footpath for public safety, and that hasn't um, even come. It talks about a bus stop. Now, I'm not sure which bus stop you're talking about, because the bus stop on that side of the road is one of these ones that's just been plonked outside some houses. It has no actual bus stop around it because behind it are parking spaces and houses so I'm not really sure what those improvements are um, I think we all know that that's a very dangerous road HGVs going to Dunsfold Park and buses and if a bus and a, uh, an HGV cross then one has to go up on the verge and I think people also saw that the road is starting to sink on the edges we turn to Thames Water, just what it says, inability of the existing wastewater infrastructure to accommodate the needs of this application. And then it says we'll have a Grampian style condition should be imposed. Well, this is 100 yards from that location I mentioned earlier, where sewage from the four houses is now pumping into other people's houses. We cannot allow that sort of thing to happen. This is within 100 yards of this location. If we look at the previous plan in history, site, the site has been refused due to its location outside the settlement. It was classed as undesirable extension of residential development to the detriment of the character of the area. They appealed this and the appeal was dismissed. Nothing's changed. The land availability assessment, which we rely on so much of our work, considers it appropriate for 15 houses. So that's where it's considered appropriate for 15, yet we're suddenly going to put 39. 39 exceeds what we consider appropriate, so other LAA sites are being turned down for this. I'm amazed that we have one figure and then we ignore it. The application is out of keeping with the village of the size of Allfold. If you look on the opposite side on Dunsfold Road, they are single houses. Um, even Brockhurst Cottages does not go back that far. That is out of keeping with the village. 
We know the roads are poorly made and they're very narrow. And we know that location and up onto the 281 and down in Loxford Road, there have been fatalities and there have been serious collisions. If you look at the letters received, um, and I support all these concerns, the area has been subject to flooding. I know from fact that when Green Lane flooded, the houses, it went through and kitchens had to be replaced. This is not what a plan, of, you know, flooding assessment needs to tell us. I've seen it. I've seen all fold flood. We do know the sewer system is overloaded. And again, when we were at that site, and my apologies, I can't remember which members it were, but we could smell the sewage whilst we were standing by the gate. And I think it was well summed up um, when people said the system's overloaded and can't cope anymore. We talked about the, um, in the other applications, about the power supply. I know they're not a statutory um, respondent, but I've known up to three or four power cuts in one single day in that area. I know because when their power goes off, so does mine. So I think the proposal is out of keeping with policy C2. It's out of linear landscape of the rural village. It is a loss of countryside. It's urbanizing impact of the development and looking at that uh, diagram on, on the board, how you can't say it's not, I'd be gobsmacked. And I think the, I think um, Councillor Erica mentioned about the neighborhood plan it's trying to create a green buffer zone around the village so this will be contrary to everything it's trying to achieve i've said it's out of scale and character of the village um, and it's an inappropriate density for a small village settlement this is backfield development and that's what one of the letters said and it's not complementary to the development of the village I don't think it's sustainable as it's adjacent to rural settlements and it's significant distance from local amenities. Sorry, Councillor Coburn, did you want to say something? No, I just... Councillor Dinas, I'm allowed to move my face as, as I wish, you know, I'm sorry if you don't like it. It is, it's, it's unhelpful when faces are being pulled. Um, it has poor local transport. A lot of people say it's non-existent. If you look along Dunsfold Road, and I think we all know that road, this increases Dunsfold Road by 130% at this location. This is a greenfield site, and brownfield site should be considered first. I know the neighbour plan is doing that. The applicant is referred to three pubs and MOT centres, and I think we all accept that that's totally inaccurate. There is an impact on the neighbours and they will lose visual impact from the countryside. Now page 26 of your document, policy C2 of the Waverley Borough Plan 2002 states that building in the countryside beyond the green belt away from existing settlement will be strictly controlled. Policy RE1 of the draft local plan states that the intrinsic beauty of the countryside will be recognised and safeguarded in accordance with the MPPF. The site is adjacent to the settlement boundary and is it within the countryside. The Council Sustainability Report in 2016 states that according to the sequential approach, greenfield sites around these settlements should be the final location at which to deliver growth. Well, 15 years of the plan still to go and the neighbourhood plan still to be agreed, we can't say that's true. The following paragraph states, the village is considered to have very limited level of facilities and therefore a total number of 100 homes to be delivered over the plan period has been considered as appropriate. So over a period to 2035. Page 27 highlights this would represent a relatively large northward extension to the village and the southwestern infill and along Dunsfold. This site was allocated a yield of 15 dwellings. 
page 28, I think it's the third paragraph, the proposal would have limited access to the facilities of permitting healthy communities as Allfold Crossways and Allfold is not considered to be a sustainable location in terms of available services and facilities. It states it doesn't feel that the development result in isolated dwellings. I totally disagree. The officers say the proposal would replace open fields with substantial urban built form. And then they go on to say the number of dwellings would result in a density of residential development in the surrounding, though this would result in a notably different form of development to the existing surroundings. They don't consider it would cause considerable harm given the number of proposed homes. Well, this is a 30% increase already on the village. They clearly state the development would be harmful to the character and appearance of the open fields, but then dismisses by saying it will be okay because there's land beyond the application site. Page 39. There's so much more to go, uh, Councillor Dinas. There, there are quite a few points, and I want to then quote some of Waverley's own documents which contradict what um, has been said already. Okay, page 39, it talks about the land at Loxwood Road, which is over about half a mile from this location. Now, I think everybody, when travelling from the garden centre to this location, I'm not sure which member it was, but was subject to a bit of road rage and honking of the horns. And I was stuck then on the A281, just stranded, because I couldn't even turn into the road. So... Right, paragraph 17 of the MPPF 2012 states that planning should take into account and support local strategies to improve health, social and cultural well-being and deliver su sufficient community and cultural facilities and services to meet local needs. I see nothing in this application that gives other than the land which supports this. Now, I just go into a couple of conclusions then I'll go to a document and I'll just read this is Waverley's document so it is outside the defined settlement boundary and development conflict with policy C2 of the plan I submit that the benefits do not outweigh the harm to the countryside the council does have a five year housing supply and therefore substantial weight can be given or some weight can be given the site is located with limited access to services and facilities and I'm just trying to think which the nearest one would be. It's probably a minimum of half a mile away. This is overdevelopment of the site, which will have over-reliance on vehicle travel. It has an urbanising effect on the village. And it does have a, a material visual harm on the rural character. Now, I will turn to this final document, which is Waverley Borough Council, um, dated to 25th of October. And although I accept this is um, for a very, very slightly higher number of houses, the location and the facilities and everything else is basically the same. It says, and this is from Peter Cleveland, it's from, I do have concerns that the development will be contrary to the environmental dimension of sustainable development in this regard. It also says, Allfold is a small village with limited amenities. It goes on to say, it is my opinion that any over-delivery past the allocated numbers in the pre-submission local plan would simply not be sustainable. It says the LAA is the capacity for delivering 15 units. It also states that they echo the concerns raised in the LAA with regards to the depth of build form in relation to the form and pattern of the settlement. And it states, if I'm Waverley, the proposal does not the proposal does have the potential to read poorly as a very modern and urban bolt on to a rural village. In addition to the harm in principle from extending into the countryside, there would be visual harm in this regard. And this is letters from Peter Cleveland. And their summary from Waverley says the impact of the proposal on the countryside, both in terms of principle and the rural setting of the village would be considered harmful. Furthermore, I've also raised concerns with the sustainability of de developing in this location. These aren't my words, 
These are words from Waverley Borough Council. Now, there are other points, but I think that final letter and those points, I think, reinforce everything I've said during this application. It is far too big. 15 houses may have been a potential, but we haven't seen that plan. Thank you, it Councillor Dinas. Councillor Coburn. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I, I do apologise for expressing a disagreement with you, Councillor Dinas. I didn't know that was not allowed. Certainly, when you make some points, it's very difficult to uh, accept what you're saying. I have reservations about what's going on in this site, but you made a statement that nothing has changed. I'm sorry, but everything has changed at the moment in the planning area, as it were. We are in a different time from where we were when we had previous applications, and we have to move on. We have to look at the situation as it is now and the policies as they are now. The other reason that I may have looked surprised was when you said that this was a totally isolated site. I don't think even that picture we've got on here, but when you show the other one, could you do the location plan? You know, there is development there. This actually abuts development. And the one thing the inspector went on and on about was contiguous. He used that word several times, that new development, whether it's in the villages or the larger settlements, should be contiguous with previous development or the settlement boundary. So I do query certain things that you say. I don't see this as isolated. It may not be appropriate for all fault. I don't know. I haven't heard the rest of the debate. But it is not isolated, and things have changed. We have to reach a higher target. We have no choice in that if we want a sound plan, and we have to look at everything anew. We cannot just go backwards and say, well, four or five, goodness knows how many years ago it wasn't accepted, nothing has changed. I'm afraid it has changed, and we have to look anew. So I don't agree with everything you say, Councillor Dinas, and I reserve my right to look as though I don't agree with you at times. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I might say I disagreed also because many of the bus stops in my locality do not have bus stops other than a sign on a pole. Um, and nine dwellings per hectare is fairly gentle, I would have thought. Where have we got to? Councillor Hyman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, when we attended the site visit earlier, um, there were a couple of matters raised. I understand that um, uh, another councillor asked that a topographical survey be provided and presented this evening. Is that right? Uh, we, we, we had the uh, topography. And the, and the, the, the reason, uh, uh, as Councillor Danius has um, st stated, that the houses in Green Lane flooded um, and, and flooded quite badly. But if you read the flood risk assessment, as I did for this uh, uh, development, that doesn't happen in 5,000 years. That wouldn't happen once in 5,000 years, according to the flood risk assessment. Uh, I've been through all the maps and the levels. So, you know, obviously there are, there are problems there. And again, we will have... The development. It's not the developer's fault that the information held by the um, Environment Agency and, and other agencies is, is inaccurate and doesn't reflect what actually goes on. And, and it's not their fault necessarily people don't report fields flooding. It's only when people get to develop on them that it starts to become a problem. Who cares if a field has flooded loads of times over hundreds of years? Um, nobody bothers uh, to, to make a note of it because obviously it's only when houses flood that, that, you've, uh, that you get worried about it. But so. Um, I would like more information, certainly in respect of the, um, uh, if, if I was going to vote in favour of this, I, really I just don't think that we should be voting in favour of things these days when um, we know full well that we've got uh, problems with the flood risk assessments and whatever the experts say, an X is a has-been and a spurt's a drip under pressure and I've always hated being called an expert in my business. So um, regarding public open space was the other issue. Um, that uh, we, we raised at the site meeting, which is, it says this is public open space, the northern area. Um, and, of course, that 
Uh, the connotations are, it, of that is that it implies transfer into public ownership, uh, um, and I think uh, that was raised, the, the possibility or the question of that was raised by Allfold Parish Council uh, earlier. Um, was, w without public ownership, there's no real surety. An application could appear in two years, 20 years' time, whatever, with an officer report saying we can't refuse it, and um, because the public open space is underused, or for whatever reason, the sort of thing we hear regularly. So... Um, you know, I'd like clarity and respect. I of think the what officers have be. an answer for that, Councillor. Thanks. And the other, the other issue which was raised, I think the gentleman's name is Mr. Denton Miller, um, st uh, stated that uh, in respect of the Springbok application over the road, um, the council is defending the opposite position to what is being taken here at appeal. Obviously, there's a need for consistency in the in the council's um, uh, position. So, if you can explain to me, please, whether that is um, you know, what what the position is to what position we should be taking in our decision making in respect of how this recommendation fits with the uh, um, position the council's taking and defending at Springbok. Thank you chairman. Thank you. I'll turn to uh, Tim first of all on the uh, land and uh, perhaps Elizabeth Sint. Thank you chairman. Uh, yes in regard to the public open space um, the application outlines that um, a management company is to be set up to manage that land along with the um, SUDS um, and other various public open space within the um, development site, part of the site. Um, so that is that has been confirmed. Um, in terms of the topographical survey, um, I actually don't have it on file to hand, um, but the, they have submitted a flood risk assessment um, and drainage strategy, which has been looked at by the, the LLFA, um, and they have recommended appropriate conditions um, therein to ensure that surface water drainage is adequately done. Um, and further, the Thames Water recommendations is is for two conditions. Um, so I hope that's clarified. Clarified those. Thank you, Jim. Councillor James. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll start by saying that I didn't object to the previous, the first application tonight because it was a brownfield site, because it does state in the agenda by the officers that um, as Arfold um, is an other settlement, Arfold is another settlement, greenfield sites should be the final location. So the first one was a brownfield site, which is, although I didn't like it, I did vote for it, um, but members didn't. Um, so, but this is a completely different, and it does say the greenfield sites should be the final, final location. Well, as we've now given permission for the 90-something already, and we've got years to go, I'm sure we could find some more little brownfield sites, um, even a, you know, a house knocked down and you put you know, five instead of one. Um, but I, I, on the site visit, there was that line of trees going straight across, and I... <laughs> originally thought that is the site and then we were told no actually they were going to be taken away that one there and actually go beyond that because even in the agenda it says um, that the lo local infilling um, there's some potential not the whole site it's on page 27 of 70 it says not the whole site however some potential for the infilling on the Dunsfold frontage and then, as Councillor Dina said, possibly 15. Well, we've gone way beyond the back of that um, cul-de-sac of little houses, whatever they're called. Um, whatever it might be called, Brockhurst, the little one at the bottom on the right there. I haven't got my glasses to read it from here. You know, so if it went straight across, and I imagine that's roughly where that green line of, of um, trees were, then that would be infilling on the Dunsville frontage. But going beyond it, you know, even for me, and it, I find it hard, it, it is definitely greenfield, and it's way too much in one large amount of houses. Awful, awful these little ones. Um, and the density, if you're including all that open space at the top, that's what makes the density so low. If you actually look at the density of the built area, that's much higher. Um, and that's what I think we should look at. If you include all that extra bit at the top, that does make it a, a very different thing. But I'm afraid at this moment, I'm not very happy with it. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Hill. 
Um, yes, Chairman. Um, well, I happen to think this is a very um, valuable uh, contribution to um, Waverley's um, new uh, um, targets, new requirement for uh, house building. I think that the development, uh, to my mind, fits very well in with the existing um, uh, landscape, the houses that have already been uh, built here, uh, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if um, there wasn't um, objections to those when they were proposed many years ago. Um, uh, and, and I think this is a f fact of life. We have to live with the uh, uh, requirement to build more because there is the demand. Uh, I, I think that um, it's very good that some serious thought has been given to landscaping uh, with the, the pond, the uh, public open space. And uh, at 22 um, dwellings per hectare, um, this appears to be less dense than the, um, uh, the um, garden centre development, so uh, is to be um, supported for that reason as well. Thank you. Councillor Gray. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I could just remind members, we, we really are talking about a rural village here, and I know Councillor Colburn made the comments that it was abutting. Oldfold is a very stretched out community. It's a community of about 350 homes, according to Councillor Dinas. And around the Oldfold Crossways area, there's probably about 30 to 40 houses. So this is a very substantial increase in that part of the village. Oldfold stretches out um, a long way. Um, I don't know how far it is. But this site is, is a long way from the centre, a long way from the, uh, the, the village centre and the village shop. Um, I don't think, in my personal view, it's, it's just extending the boundary. It's infilling that. I mean, if we go back to the previous plan, um, I think that the, the houses that are shown there, um, I think they are very rural in nature, the way that they've been developed, um, the way they've emerged. And this is not the same. This is putting an estate, a small estate, um, into a slot. Um, and I don't feel it's in keeping with the rural look and feel of, uh, of Oldfold. They are providing a lot of houses. They've said there are further more houses to come. There's a lot of areas that I think the inspector referred to where houses could come. And I don't think we should be looking to jump on the first one that comes along to this committee and say, we need this to get more houses. Thank you. Uh, to the officers, Councillor Munn. Thank you, Chairman. Um, before I, I broadly agree with what Councillor Gray has said, but um, just going back to the issue of conditions, could the officers give me some comfort as to why the Thames water request for a Grampian style condition hasn't actually appeared as a condition. I do see in the informatives that the option of using a section 106 agreement is considered and is that in fact how you were planning to implement their request? It's informative one on page 66 or 70. Yes, sir. Thank you, Councillor Miller. Um, so, Thames Water, we have the, the phasing plan. So, in acknowledging that the, under the, uh, what, what they said, that there's insufficient capacity, um, they have recommended not only the, the cramping style condition number 18, um, but also they've recommended that the development be phased. And so, what we have um, come up with is condition 19. Um, which captures the phasing that they've asked for. Um, 
obviously this application is for 39 dwellings, so is it a number that actually phasing could, could be accommodated within the development? Um, and so with, with that from them, um, we have proposed it to be a condition um, rather than necessarily within a 1-6. Oh, I simply had not managed to find that. I'd gone through everything else. And um, it is interesting that they say in the reason this is a pre commencement condition as the matter goes to the heart of the permission, which I'm afraid just makes me feel that my concerns about the earlier applications have got some substance to them. I think on the, sub on the merits of this, I do understand exactly what Councillor Coburn is saying about the fact that the game has changed. But it does strike me that when you're dealing with anything to do with water and, and flooding, the experience of recent years must surely mean that what is said in the guidance is still of primary importance. No matter how urgent your need for houses over 15 years, no matter how compelling the argument for finding spaces for them, you do not want people to be building houses where they might be flooded out of them or be given rise to health issues because feces are coming up in, the, in their gardens. And I do feel, just a general comment, that we need to take this aspect of life in this part of the borough much more seriously. And the fact that we're not actually, in the, in the previous application, Southern Water said nothing at all. It just strikes me as unfortunate that that aspect was not picked up. Uh, officers, do you want to say anything else? There is just one point, Chairman, if I could just add, that I, I just wanted to clarify. I think the response that Councillor Dinas was reading from was a pre-application response that we, we gave advice on. I didn't quite catch the, the reference point, but I think that might have been in relation to a, a much larger development. And I just wondered if you could clarify the, the actual proposal that that was in relation to, because we think it might have been a development for 60 units. Yeah, I, I do think, in fairness, it's probably an important point to make that we probably were expressing strong concerns because that's a different scale of development. I think it was quite important for members to just appreciate that point. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. And uh, I'd just say that pre-applications are confidential. Um, so uh, can we move to the recommendation? Recommendation A, that subject the completion of a so, one- Sorry, Chair. Um, th this, this letter is actually on the website. So if it's confidential, Waverley have put it on the website. Um, and the point Council Coburn made and about the game has changed, I don't deny that. When I said those comments I read out, which were quite damning, was about the location, about the sustainability, about the facilities. That doesn't change. I certainly accept that Waverley as a whole have to find some more houses, and I'm sure all fold will play its part. Those comments related to that location, and even, yes, it is for 60, but most of those comments I raised or read out were about the location, sustainability, facilities, and everything else. So they still apply. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Let's move to the recommendation A, that subject completion of 106 agreement to secure 15, that, that's 38.5%, Affordable housing dwellings, contribution towards education infrastructure, waste and recycling, play space, public open space, suds and a leap within three months of the committee meeting subject conditions, permission be granted. Those in favour, please show. Three. Those against? Eleven. Thank you. Abstentions? May have, a, therefore, that motion is lost. Recommendation B uh, falls. Uh, an alternative proposal, a seconder and reasons. Please, Councillor Deans. Yes, I, I propose. Seconder. Councillor Foresky and reasons, please. Okay, the reasons I would say is the proposal as a result of the number of dwellings, the layout and urbanising impact 
would result in material visual harm to the rural character of the area and intrinsic character, beauty and openness of the countryside. And I would reiterate it's outside the settlement. It's the over um, development urbanisation of the site. And I don't know whether we can put over reliance on vehicle, travel, etc., but I'll take advice on that. Hyman? Thank you, Chairman. I, I wonder if officers can advise, please, whether we're able to um, put as a include in a reason for a refusal that the flood risk assessment doesn't reflect reality and also uh, whether there's some way that can be linked into something which we can say um, or uh, and and also furthermore how this doesn't seem to accord uh, with the position of the council in Springbok so the reasons being used in Springbok that the council's defending whether we can just transfer and use those as a as a, uh, a consistent position of this council on the flood risk, risk assessment, I think you have to accept the word of the experts, whether you agree with them or not. Um, I, in my professional life, I relied on others, and I didn't question them. Um, you know, that is life. You have to rely on experts to give you... Uh, they are specialists in this particular field, and that's it. Elizabeth, do you want to uh, add anything? Uh, only, Chairman, to agree with what you said. Clearly, you still are the decision makers. It falls within your gift to have a view. But as I said before, although we all have a perception of the acceptability of the flooding situation, we're not hydraulic engineers, we're not flooding experts. We seek advice, we expect the applicant to submit their advice, and then we have that scrutinised. So I just rehearsed what the Chairman said, that no reason for refusal has been put forward by your professional advisers, and we would strongly recommend you don't include that mm -hmm. as one of your reasons. But we have captured um, the, the concerns expressed about visual character, and perhaps I'll ask Catherine, Chairman, just to rehearse those words to see if we picked up what Councillor Dinas has suggested. Please, Catherine. Okay. So... The development by virtue of the extent of development and number of dwellings proposed, um, together with the d density, would cause harm to the intrinsic character and beauty of the countryside, contrary to policy C2 of the local plan and paragraph 17 of the MPPF. Um, and you would also need the additional reasons for refusal relating to provision of affordable housing not being secured by legal agreement and infrastructure and highway improvements secured by a legal agreement. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Holder, do you want to wish to add anything? Well, I'm just wondering, uh, Chairman, if we can refuse this on the basis of overdevelopment, if the application is for up to 39 houses, I mean, as it's up to 39 houses, it could in fact be 10 houses. So I'm just wondering whether the, the reason for refusal is overdevelopment is, is viable. Catherine. I think I would advise that the, the wording that you've got in the reason for refusal, i.e. the number of dwellings and extent of development, in its very essence captures the fact that you consider this to be an overdevelopment of the site. So if you're content that that covers that, that point. Thank you. Shall we move to the recommendation proposed by Councillor Dinas, seconded by Councillor Foresky? Reasons given. Those in favour of refusal, please show. Fourteen. Those against? Abstentions? Four abstentions. Permission is refused. That concludes our meeting. Thank you all very much indeed. Let's go home and have a glass of water. <laughs>